Fam, what's going on? Kyle Henderson, Pamela Football on YouTube. Good morning. It is Thursday, April 18th. Can I get a roll tide inside the comment box? Let me see it undefeated. How you guys feeling? Let me know you guys are watching from. I appreciate you guys being here. And thank you for joining me on this beautiful Monday. Monday. <laughs> on this beautiful Thursday, April 18th. What's going on? Man, I got the workout in. Feeling good. And I know, you know what? I listen to you guys. I read the comment boxes. So, so many people were talking about the Red Bulls, okay? So, look, I don't always do the Red Bulls, okay? So, here's, I'm, I, I'm health conscious, okay? So, what I also do, okay, besides rub it on my back. <laughs> so, I got the lemon water, okay? And then inside of this is also an electrolyte, okay? And then the ice water. So, I know, but you know, it means a lot that you guys are looking out for me. So I appreciate you guys. Okay. Um, so as we get going on the show, what I want to do is I want to take your calls. Yesterday, I wasn't able to take your calls. I'll change out the banner right now uh, and put the call in line number on 205-850-1994. That is the call in line number. So if you want to get in um, where you fit in, go ahead and call. If you guys know where that's from, Too Short. Does anybody know who Too Short is? <laughs> All right, so what is the biggest question mark after spring? Type in, um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to figure out what to type in. For me, like the biggest question mark going into springtime and after spring um, is kind of, I was wondering, almost it, it had to do with like the portal, to be honest, right? Because I was curious to see what would happen in the portal. And I get it. Thank you. Matt, Matt Farms with the, with the two short. I appreciate it. Um, who Alabama would go after in the transfer portal, because I think I have an idea of where Alabama wants to go, right? Secondary or offensive line, but who is that going to be and how many, right? Short dog in the house. That's right, Jay. Um, the question, what's up? Good morning to y'all. I appreciate it. George, daddy's home. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm just wondering from like a roster standpoint where Alabama needs to go. Clearly, that's secondary and offensive line. Is there a player out there in the portal so far that you are like has made your ears perk up? For me, there's been so many. It's a little bit overwhelming. I've kind of honestly, I've been kind of finding like following like the basketball transfer portal stuff. That's been a little bit more interesting for right now. And I know that Mark Sears. See, the thing is, so I I think that Mark Sears will come back. I know he did declare for the NBA draft, but he's still maintaining his college eligibility. Just kind of sticking his toe into the water. I think he comes back, and I think he leads the squad. Wasn't surprised about Pringle. We talked about that yesterday, right? Walters, I was a little bit surprised. Griffin, I guess a little bit surprised. But, man, I feel like... You know that feeling when guys would leave and you still had nick saban that's kind of <laughs> and i know he hasn't won a national title game but i like i'm like okay as long as is nato still here okay wake me up when the season's here because that's kind of like what we had with coach saban right wake me up wake me up when the season's here charles weaver what's up man i appreciate you being here wide receiver and kicker the only uh one to enter the portal of now andre craig and reed harden huh yeah, I don't, I mean, I I wouldn't mind, and I said this, you know, a couple times earlier, I wouldn't mind to see a kicker come in from the transfer portal. Old Rock Guy, what's up, man? Thank, thanks for being a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. We need to go after anyone that doesn't have two years of playing experience and no more than two years of eligibility left. I've looked at the bio of all in all of the O-line uh, that meet that criteria. What's up? Raise the bar. Good morning to you. I appreciate you checking in. You had the late night crew last night. You had Coach Sean and Coach Smook taking you home. Um, the schedule today, I got Ty. He's back today. He'll be on at 9.30. And then um, we also have Coach Smook this morning as well. Yeah, I'm not... I mean, let me let me ask you this, Undefeated. Were you surprised... Have you been surprised that there hasn't been, like, portal entries for Alabama? I was expecting there... Because I, like, rewind to, what, two weeks ago? When we were setting our like over under for the portal injuries and there really wasn't any like we we set the portal entry like at what five what i i think i opened it up at like eight 
And then we kind of went down. And then as I started thinking about it, Cynthia is not surprised at all. And now as I'm kind of like looking back, I guess the fact that players can't transfer within the SEC has really no no David I I, I think that uh <laughs> I think that they, I think it's because of the fact that um you can't transfer within the SEC that's that's all I'm saying <laughs> Josh Pay said I know Josh Pay said it was going to be so crazy I haven't thought it was crazy I haven't think it, thought it's been crazy at all hmm B Wood, I think you're onto something right here. It speaks volumes about uh, the DeBoer culture. 100%. I think with... I think, honestly, the players had a lot of time to understand Coach Kalen DeBoer's message and to understand who he was and who he is as a head football coach. And I think, you know, this new energy... They bought into it. They bought into the program. I think there's a lot of players on the team that have unfinished business and that want to be a part of the brand still. So I think when you look at it overall, maybe it's not surprised. Surprising. I still think Keon Keeley will hit the portal. I don't know. I I just, you know, I think what is this a two week period so we can continue to you know check where where things stand within two weeks, but. I don't know. Call line is open. Uh, 205-850-1994. want to talk a little bit about uh, the NFL draft, uh, which is uh, next week as well. How many do you think undefeated? Let me ask you. What's up, Michael Phillips from the ATL? I appreciate you being here, man. Health and wealth. What's going on, man? Appreciate you. Kevin, good morning to you. David, what's up, man? Um... Haven't realized teams haven't p- played their spring game, huh? Yeah, I know. I think sometimes we get so hyper focused on Alabama, we're just like Alabama played their spring game. Okay, who else is in the portal? All right, NFL draft. What's up, Adam Lump- uh, Lampello? What's up, Andy Janice in the house? I appreciate you. How many first round draft picks will be taken uh, in this upcoming NFL draft from Alabama? What do you guys think? Dallas turn because I was I've been looking at some some mock drafts and what I I think like four let's let's run through them Dallas Turner J C Latham Terion Kool Aid Jimmy Baker what's up man appreciate you being here three four list them out two undefeated who do you think who let me see inside chat type like your three first round players. That's one of the great things, Kevin, that On3 did for sure. This tra- That transfer portal page is hot. Because it organizes like the transfers. But on the flip side, I've just been like following my phone on Twitter. And it's like every single second I check it, there's another name. It's almost too much. All right, NFL Draft uh, raised the bar is saying Dallas Turner, Taryn Arnold, and J.C. Latham. All right, Latham, Kool-Aid. Let me ask you this. Type K inside the comment box if you think Kool-Aid will go in the first round. Type K inside chat if you think Kool-Aid will go in the first round. Oh, this is interesting. Demoy Kennedy, remember him? He entered the transfer portal. DeMoy Kennedy was over here. All right, so a lot of K's actually on Kool-Aid. Interesting. Okay. All right, so old rock guy is saying Turner, Latham, Terion, and Kool-Aid. Okay. So that's four, right? And those guys are still under Coach Saban. And what, what's going to be amazing to see in the NFL uh, draft coverage will be Coach Saban talking about 
the NFL draft, but also talking about his players. I think the fact that Kool Aid had what was it a Liz Frank, Liz Frank injury, right? And he still ran like a four four. I don't know. It, it, when you look back to Kool Aid's, you know, career last year, I don't know if he really like met the threshold of his play. But I know some teams stayed away from him because, like, I think we can all agree that Taron Arnold elevated his game last year in his draft stock, right? Yeah, Demoy Kennedy back in uh, the portal. You know what, Jarvis? Sometimes people forget about Dallas Turner because, you know, he, I don't know, he's not that, like, he doesn't really complain or act up on social media, or whatever. He didn't have to do, I mean, he, but, but his pro day spoke for, spoke for itself. Like, his play on the field last year and then his combine was crazy. His numbers were unbelievable. I, I would expect him to be a, a what, top 10 guy for sure. All right, let's take some calls. Yesterday, we couldn't uh, hear the calls. So give me a, a thumbs up if we're back on, if we can hear the calls. Uh, we're going to take, we have a uh, 201 and an 832. I think that's a, 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 it could be free mic. All right, a 201. Hey, good morning. You're on the line with Kyle Anderson. Who am I on line with and where are you calling him from? Hey, Kyle, it's Adam calling from Georgia. How you doing? What's up, Adam? Can everybody hear Adam? Please give me a thumbs up if you can hear Adam. What's up, Adam? I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you so much. I hope you're off to a really good week. And um, come with it, man. Take it away. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, I saw on your on the screen there you were saying biggest questions after spring. Well, you know, when I'm reflecting on A-Day, what I noticed is that we're very talented, uh, but we're very inexperienced uh, in the secondary and have some issues in pass protection with the O-line. So I think we have great potential, but we're still developing, and there's going to be some growing pains next year. Mm. But in any event, the ultimate goal, I think, to make the playoffs is to go 9-3, and three, even though we might go 10-2 and two or 11-1. and one. If we do that, I think we get in. But the truth is it's conceivable, in my view, that we could lose to Georgia and at Tennessee and LSU. So my point is that, in my view, Wisconsin – Mm. is going to be the biggest game of the year because that is going to be, if we win that game, we can absorb some additional losses and still get in because when we go to Oklahoma in November, this team is going to have grown so much yeah. and be so dangerous that, that we're going to beat them. And if we get into the playoffs, which we will at 9-3 and three in my view, we could win the whole thing. So I was wondering what your thoughts are on that and also if you thought – that the freshman uh, defensive backs could make an immediate impact this year. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate it, Adam. Um, Adam, a long time, um, you know, uh, fan funder of uh, the YouTube channel. I think, um, well, number one with the freshmen uh, making an impact on uh, the secondary. I think at some point they will, um, but I don't think it'll be early on. Look, I, I get it. Red Morgan did a great job, but if Zay, let's just say Zabion Brown, and I'm, I'm just, I'm being honest. If these guys were to play elite talent from the SEC, I think they would get eaten up right now. That's why I'm eager for Alabama to bring somebody that has experience to the secondary, specifically at the corner position. So in time, these guys are going to be ready for it. Not right now. I get it. There's a long time before now in the season, but I think, uh, you know, the secondary, I think they need some help. Um, uh, Adam uh, just called and I'll, I'll get you again Adam I appreciate it but talking about the season the, the pivotal game is the game against Georgia and the great thing about that game is I don't think it, it I think it's going to work well for Alabama in either way right let's say that Georgia comes in with a lot of momentum and Alabama really hasn't put together their identity yet okay Georgia beats Alabama whatever the wheels won't fall off completely because Alabama has that second half of the schedule where they, they can do a lot of growing up. They would learn from this game in this scenario and learn from that game. And I think it would come together as a team to be able to get ready for that back end. Now, if they beat Georgia, my goodness, the momentum that that team will have early on in the season and the momentum that Kalen DeBoer will get from beating Georgia and Kirby Smart at home um, in late September in late September will be unbelievable. They might run through the entire schedule. So I think that that Georgia game, I love where it's at, to be honest. Um, I think that, it, you know, whatever happens in that game, if they lose, chance for them to rebound. If they win, oh my goodness, watch out college football. 
The back end of Alabama's schedule is ultra challenging, 100%. Think about this. Coach Caitlin, I mentioned this several times. Coach Caitlin DeBoer, and call in line is open, by the way. I'll get your, uh, I think there's another uh, call in coming in. 205-850-1994. Think about this. Washington Stadium sits 70,000. Alabama, for the spring game, talked about that, has 72,000, okay? Coach Caitlin DeBoer has not coached on the road in the SEC yet. I get it. They go to Camp Randall early on in the season. The Big Ten is not the SEC in the late season. Going on the road to Neyland Stadium uh, against Tennessee, that's going to be crazy, right? It's a it's a challenging environment. Going to Baton Rouge on the back end, challenging environment. Alabama is also going to have to go to Oklahoma, challenging environment. Late season, a lot on the line. Come back and play Auburn. So it's a very challenging schedule. And Coach Kalen DeBoer will learn. His staff will learn. But none of those guys, um, you know, have coached Alabama during those high-pressure games. Right? Um, we'll take our next call. I think, I, I believe it is uh, Free Mike. Get the emojis up if it's Free Mike. Is, is this a collect call? It is, Kyle. Good morning. To accept, press one. Mike, what's up, man? Get the free emojis up. Free Mike emojis inside the comment box. Uh, good morning to you, Mike. Calling from Austin. Go ahead, man. Good morning, Kyle. Thank you for taking my call, my only friend. Well, <laughs> apparently I have a new cellmate. Do you know that guy that with the chainsaw that cut up all them teenagers here in Texas? Are you familiar with that story? I man. made a movie about it. Uh, <laughs> well, that guy's going to be my new cellmate. Hey, everything's going to be cool. As long as he likes Hallmark movies, it's going to be an easy transition. You know what I mean? So that, that's the way I look at that. <laughs> you know, both of those, the, the both of those down, movies... Both of those movies were were scary. So the first one, the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the one that was released later, that one was scary. I don't really like horror movies, but you know that one was entertaining. <clears throat> the, the so so then I watched the first one, which was made like back in the seventies. That one is terrifying. Um, so they're both, and I know there's kind of some spinoffs, but those are some scary movies. Mike, continue, man. They are scary. That's the whole premise of it, being lost in the country, you know. And yeah. It's the whole, but, yeah, but here you go, Kyle. Here, back to more important things, right? Bama football, <laughs> very important. Like, like, like I've been saying all year, Kyle, the Wisconsin game, like your previous caller, I think that's our most important mm. early season game. And this is why. The Georgia game, you know, we're really not expected to win that game. Yes, we're expected to be competitive in the game, mm. but we're probably not going to be favored to win. Now, in the Wisconsin game, although it's up there up north in the, the icy tundra, it's going to be, uh, we're, we're going to be expected to win that game. So we kind of have to win that game because if we don't if, then all the haters are setting in which they're already trying to find angles to set in so we can't give them none so I'm really that Wisconsin game is very very important to win because we're expected to win and we should win so mm. they're very very important but it's going to be a tough go no doubt about it Kyle are you surprised uh, Mike that there hasn't been like these earth shattering names that have hopped into the portal because, you know, the college, you know, football kings and, uh, you know, Josh Pate said that it was going to be like this craziness that has happened. Maybe it has in a sense. I just, you know, there, there hasn't been, um, you know, that, and I get it. The, the, the timing is still open, but I mean, are you surprised? Is, is that a message from coach Kalen DeBoer that he's won over this entire ro roster? What, what's your take here? Yes, I think it is a reflection of the team and Kalen DeBoer and the yeah. roster, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm surprised, Kyle. I'm surprised because I thought there would be more transfers yeah. just by the nature of the college football base that we're living in. And now that the team's getting set on people do or don't find their place on the team. And one name in particular I'm surprised that, of course, is Ty Simpson. But I'm, I'm very, very happy mm -hmm. that he's staying to be our quarterback in the future, if not sooner than later. But, uh, yeah, I'm surprised there's not more. But what you were talking about earlier with the, with the rules that are set <clears> in place, like I guess the in-conference or out-of-conference rules or something like that. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but yes, bottom line is yes, Kyle. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more transfers, but I'm very happy that I'm not. All right, uh, last thing I got for you, Mike. You're an NFL GM. Uh, who are you drafting um, in what order from Alabama um, in the upcoming NFL draft next week? Well, I would probably, I mean, I, it's hard. To, the I would say Dallas Turner. I'd say da- yeah. Dallas Turner to me, he, he's NFL ready. NFL made a lot like Will Anderson, which I think Will Anderson is the NFL rookie of the year or, or, yeah, he yeah, rookie of the year, and and I'm a I'm a Texas uh, uh, Houston Texans fan. Houston Texans fan. That's my pro team. So uh, so, but I would so I, <laughs> I would I would take which by the way, Houston Texans is NFL. I mean, Bama wide. If you look at the Houston Texans roster, they're they're Bama they're Bama pro team, but with a coach as well, coach as well. But uh, I, I would say Dallas Turner. I, I think he's NFL ready, and he's proven to be an excellent player from from high school college and he's probably going to be a home run a chance player now i, I don't know if this is just my take i, I would a chance player is going to be kool-aid mckinstry now he could go the first round he could end up being a good player he could end up into being an average player it's kind of hard i know physically he has the gifts mentally i don't know where he's at but but he, but he may go in the first round but i don't know but i say Bama has three <clears> or four but definitely dallas turner that that's the one i would take right there since since uh since uh, um, uh, the other guy, uh, what's his name on ESPN, uh, t- our quarterback uh, from for, uh, Dick Saban's first quarterback. Isn't uh, it uh, name, uh, Greg McElroy? Yes, yes. Since he's not on the board, God take him number one if he was on the board. <laughs> I'd take him number one, no doubt about it. But since he's not on the board, I'd have to go ahead and take, uh, take Dallas Turner, <laughs> just so you know. But we all love Greg McElroy, but he set the pace, man. He set the pace on me. But, Kyle, I got to get going, buddy. Cell inspection, 930. I'm going to get to know my new cellmate, man. We'll send... <laughs> Leatherface, Mr. Leatherface, I think his name is. Yeah. But, hey, uh, y'all take care. Good luck, guys. God bless and roll tight. All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Uh, Mike calling in. Okay. I was talking about this yesterday. Okay. I don't I don't want to start a war, but I have to. It's always on my mind. Okay. And there's, there's many times that I always think about this. So the quarterbacks that I covered here, and I'll, I'll get to my next caller in just a second, um, which is Chris in New Jersey. He'll have some good insight on this. Okay. Undefeated. I'm asking you. I got here in 2017. So the quarterbacks that I have covered at this point in time, I'm not talking before then. I'm talking Jalen Hurts, Tua Tungvaluwa, Mac Jones, Bryce Young. Okay. Who can you rank those quarterbacks for me? Like who is your best out of those quarterbacks? And, And the reason I ask is because those quarterbacks were so much different than quarterbacks in the past. Like, this was the new Alabama offense. And I think when you think about each of those quarterbacks, they each had their own deal. But, you know, it's worth debating about. I kind of go back. Like, the thing with Tua is he threw the prettiest ball. Right? And it's hard. I know, Adam, it's hard. Okay? Okay, but with Bryce, he was a ninja. And he, as his arm strength got better... I see. I think that Bryce, the thing that he didn't have is what Tua had in better wide receivers. The, the, the wide receivers that Tua had were unbelievable, but, but Shane, you're right. That slant, that short intermediate pass was unstoppable, but he had better wide receivers. But with that said, he had better ball placement. Okay. The quarterback that we're not talking about inside here is Mac Jones. Now, Mac Jones came in, and he had the wide receivers, and he had the running back, right? He had Najee, and he waited his turn, and he did his thing, okay? Jalen Hurts was I, – so I'm going to rank Jalen Hurts fourth for, in terms of, like, those quarterbacks. So I think I go – it's tough for me. I think I go – because Mac's season, that, that one year was amazing. So I, I – I think I go Tua, Bryce, Mac, Jalen. But think about this. Mac won a natty on one of the arguably best teams in recent history right here at Alabama, right? I don't know. It's a tough debate. 
But then think about this. Think about where Jalen Hurts went and did to at Oklahoma, and then look what he's doing in the NFL. I get it. He didn't have his best season last year. And I'm just talking the, the last couple of seasons, uh, Matt Farms, you know? Kyle, are you drunk? <laughs> no, this this is just uh, uh, lemon water uh, with an electrolyte. What, what's your uh, take, Kareem Wood? What you got? <laughs> I think Jalen is a better quarterback today. See, that's the thing. You could argue, like, because Jalen continued to, like, excel into the NFL. I don't know. Let's ask Chris from New Jersey. Chris, what's up, man? I got uh, the lemon water. People were freaking out about the Red Bulls taking care of me, um, which I appreciate. Uh, I just wanted to ask real quick about like these quarterbacks, Tua, Bryce, Jalen, Mack. Those are the quarterbacks I've covered. Now you throw in Jalen Milrow. Uh, but from those four quarterbacks, how do, how do you rank those quarterbacks? Well, oh, happy Thursday, Kyle. Uh, that, that water looks tasty. Uh, uh, happy Thursday, undefeated. Yeah. Well, listen, here's the bottom line, the way I look at this. And uh, you can chatter all you want, but and you, but you can't rewrite history. And... Uh, a national title is a national title. So, mm. um, and, and we're not talking about careers in the NFL, which we'll talk about a little bit with the draft, which I got a different thoughts than, than most. But I would say this. So, and, and what did, what did uh, if you want to go out, who had the best, uh, you know, who was the best quarterback of the four? Um, it, with, it's 100% Bryce Young. But I, do I rank him number one? I don't because he, did, he, what didn't, he, did, he didn't win a natty. And why didn't he win? He was he was the most unbelievable quarter because we he didn't have a good offensive coordinator Kyle I mean the guy was we had you know Bill O'Brien I mean let me just say that I'll say this 100 percent I believe with all my heart if Bryce Young had Sark as an offensive coordinator national championship so so look I go nat you got to go Natty so who won national championships Mac Jones and Tua. Are Mac Jones and two of the best court two quarterbacks in the NFL? I think Jalen Hurts is is the cream of the crop right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, uh, you know, we we you know what's what is what is almost the whole Bama Nation undefeated? What do we judge um, success by? We judge success by national championships. That's you know what are they? I, I saw these guys doing a um, a uh, a locker room uh, review of the of the facility yesterday. And the guy, what's right in the front when you walk in? The national championship uh, um, trophies, Kyle. So, so you got to go. You know, I think Tua to um, uh, that whole season, Tua to Smitty uh, beating Georgia in the national championship one. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm sorry to say, uh, you know, some people are going to get mad about this. Um, uh, you know, and I love Bryce Young. I root for him. I was watching. I was watching at the. I, I don't generally watch the NFL. I started watching the NFL again because of at Bama players. Um, Mac Jones, too, national mm. championship. Stark, mm. great season, undefeated. Uh, walloped Ohio State, Kyle. Um, and then, uh, and then Bryce, and, you know, and then, and Jalen. And that's how I rank it. I mean, uh, let's not get all worked up, Adam, my friend, Adam. <laughs> and, you know, that's just, um, uh, uh, you know, you know, you, I, I, I base it on, on the, on, you know, we can't rewrite history, Kyle. History says <clears throat> those guys won national championships. So, <clears throat> you know, I, that, 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 that you got to take that in, into account. So, you know, that's my take, Kyle. Um, so, uh, but let me, uh, you know, on, 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 let's, let's turn this thing positive. I don't want these guys getting worked up. <laughs> um, you know, a few days into this, um, into this uh, portal, Kyle, you know, I, I always call and try to be real. I am very happy, Kyle. Uh -huh. I, uh, I'm, I'm smiling that we haven't had any, any sharks come bite us and it still may happen, but yeah. right now I'm feeling pretty good. And did you hear, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Prime, Coach Prime, he, what he said to Cormani McLean, he took a dig at him because he is in the portal. Uh -huh. um, is He said, why don't you go to a, a program that's going to really challenge you? I basically said, I dare you to go to Alabama and see if you can compete with those people, which I really found that to be wonderful for us. You know, we'll, we'll take him. You know, um, I, you know, I was on I, I was, uh, you know, in the chat with Coach Sean last night and I was like, I, I think this this um, this this coaching staff we have should put a smile on all our faces, Kyle. Mm. And, you know, and, you know, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Cormani McLean needs a little belt to ass as, as Coach yeah. Sean says. Yeah. And, you know, maybe he comes in here and we fix him up. 
So, yeah. uh, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm, 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 uh, you know, I'm very excited. I'm happy we haven't, uh, you know, lost Ty Simpson or, or even some of the other quarterbacks. Uh, and I know it could happen, but you know, right now it's Happy Thursday, Kyle, and uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm calling with with complete happiness, Kyle. So, uh, um, but I do want to talk a little NFL draft with you. Yeah. I think the, uh, you know, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong and undefeated, don't come at me, but I think the best NFL uh, uh, career for this draft class for us, 100% is going to be Kool-Aid McKinstry. Mm. And he should go first. Um, I think probably Dallas Turner will go first. Yeah. And if carry on, and I like carry on, Kyle, we've talked about this yeah. many times, yeah. you and I, but I think Kool-Aid, is going to have the best NFL career. Let's put it in the book now. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think the I, I think um, look. I think Terion is going to be such a added value to your locker room to your organization. I think Kool Aid has done a lot of maturing over the last several years. I'm curious. I don't know about Kool Aid because I don't know. Like last year, I felt he underperformed. Um, but maybe, you know, the NFL competition will make him rise up. I think that J.C. Latham will do his thing. But I think that Dallas Turner, from what he showed last season and in the NFL combine, yeah. I think he's the guy. I think, you know, it was amazing. Like, man, I you know, maybe it was like three years ago, four years ago, I was at, I was at a, a barbecue. And someone who uh, works for Alabama was like, you know, Dallas Turner isn't too far away from William Anderson. And they, he was like, a lot of people don't know that yet, but like talent wise, he's not far off. And I was like, I couldn't really like understand it at that point in time. And this guy called it a long time ago. And to see Dallas Turner where he's at, man, he's, he's unbelievable. The crazy thing is, what was he, what did he run? Like a four, four at 260 pounds. It's crazy. He's, he's, yeah, a, yeah, he's that, elite. So um, another guy. I don't think he'll go in the first round, but Chris Broswell shouldn't be too far off. Um, I would say he's like early second round type guy. You got, um, you know, Jermaine Burton, Will Riker, other guys that, you know, will be in that second to third round, third round, whatever. It, and, um, you know, I'm excited. And, and those will be the, the last guys to filter out with Coach uh, Coach Saban. And that's going to be the challenge along with Coach Kalen DeBoer, too, is like you have to recruit, you have to win, you have to play good defense, but ultimately – you have to send players to the NFL, right? When you walk in yeah. to the to the podium of um, Bryant Denny Stadium, on the wall is all of the first round draft picks. I think sometimes when you see it, you just get kind of accustomed to it. But if you zoom out, or if you're another football program, nobody else can compete with Coach Saban and what he did. And that was the brand, and that is still the brand right now, right? Is you come to Alabama, we're going to develop you at the highest level to give you the best shot to get into the NFL. And that's going to be the challenge. I mean, look at look at the guys. Like, when you came to Alabama, you came here to compete, but you also knew that Coach Saban was going to give you the best shot to win a national title, but also the best shot to win, um, you know, to, to also be in the first round, second round, third round in the NFL. 100%. Um, Chris, you want to make a final point before I before I go? Well, you know, you know, I've been saying, you know, I've been saying, Coach DeBoer is Saban two zero. Um, I I said it a long time ago, brother, um, and I think he's going to continue on the same path. So uh, uh, one last thing, I think everybody should know that Saban's debut on ESPN no. is going to be on the twenty fifth uh, for the NFL draft. So that's going to be nice. And uh, yeah. you know, like I said, I think his. His college, he's going to be at Alabama uh, for college game day for Georgia. Yep. And uh, I'm coming, baby. So uh, I want to meet everybody. I want to meet everybody in the, in for all the undefeated. I hope a lot of people can come. Mm. Uh, I hope you can get that little. I like that spot at that Westgate, Kyle. That That's sweet. You got, you <laughs> tell them you want that thing for the Georgia game <laughs> now, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh yeah, I don't. I mean, it, right, it'll be easy great. to get there during the off season. I don't know about that Georgia game, but I appreciate you calling in, Chris. Thanks so much, man. All right, thanks, brother. Roll tide. All right, roll tide to you. We'll take one more call and then we'll bring on uh, Ty Hayes. We'll go right to it. Two five six. Hey, thanks for calling in. You're online with Kyle Henderson, who I'm online with, and where are you calling in from? How you doing, Kyle? What's going on? Where? This is Henderson. Who is this? I'm sorry. This is Henderson from Lake. 
Henderson from Lake Nolan, your cousin. Yeah, uh, uh, Boots, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, uh, look here, everybody, uh, everybody think of all oh, Saban left, Caleb the boy, you know. Look, man, man's a good coach. He Look, he done pulled the culture. The culture is all is already the same. It ain't like Alabama going to change. We mm. were winning championships before we got there. Uh, you know, uh, we won championship before Saban got there. Saban won championship. Why do they think that, that just all of a sudden we're just going to not win championships? Mm. Huh? Then it moved us back to ninth in the national ranking. Hold up, Kyle. Who they think they – they must not seen that offense we had got down there, did they? <laughs> 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 look, let's just let them they say or say what they want. I feel like I feel like once the defense solidify themselves, you know, during the summer and then coming back in the fall, well, uh, yeah, it's gonna be who can outscore us. And I don't think it's one, maybe two teams you can score with us. Yeah, Texas maybe and Ohio State. But I can tell you this, we're going to have a better defense than them. So you got to look at that. Look at the real picture. And uh, with, do me one favor, Kyle, because it's been a while since I talked to you. But uh, do me one favor. I need you to go over there, knock on Caleb, uh, <laughs> the board door, and tell him. We got to have Juju look. Go over to Juju and just hang out. Don't, don't even go nowhere until he signs. <laughs> until, sign, until he sign. That's a must-have for us. You know, I think everybody in the whole Southeast know it. You know, George is scared to death. We're gonna get it. And and, and look him. Uh, this the, when you see him, just tell him. I don't care what you do. Look him. Tell him just go ahead and pull a bill fold out. I don't care what he got to have. <laughs> you know, just like we had to have uh, a Ryan Williams. You know, big money Williams coming. See, they're talking about wide receiver now. They ain't new worrying about that. We got Jeremy Bernard. We got uh, number six uh, uh, Kobe Prentice. Look. We're loaded at wide. We got the Kendrick Law. We're loaded at wide receivers. It ain't about that. How you gonna stop them running backs when you're trying to worry about them wide receivers? Huh? You can't stop jamming. <laughs> you can't stop jamming him, man. It's gonna be a hard offense to stop. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But anyway, Kyle, I appreciate your show. You know, it's really done took off and flourished, and I'm proud of that. I. I'm proud of you, really, and uh, so I hope you keep it going and uh, everything, and uh, let everybody know, hey, the tide, the, you know what they say, the tide is on the road, Hey, we're going to stay on the road. <laughs> I appreciate you, Boots. Hey, thanks so much for calling in, Boots. I, I know you're a, a long-time uh, listener, and it's good to hear your voice, man. Glad you're doing well up in Lake Gundersville, man. Appreciate you. Roll Tide, Kyle. All right, Roll Tide to you. You know, so obviously um, – I'm not from the South, but I, you know, I've lived here uh, for a while. So last year I went up to, uh, I played up in a tournament, Goose Pond up in uh, Lake Gunnersville. So I, I had to drive past it. That remember I, that's when I got, uh, I got, I got pulled over for speeding. Um, I got out of the ticket. I was honest with him. I was polite. I, I was at fault, uh, but he let me go. If you haven't been to Lake Gunnersville, this place, like, I'm not accustomed to, like, we have Lake Tuscaloosa, which is a very fine lake. It's a big lake. Lake Gunnersville, it looks like an ocean. I'm serious. It is unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, I've never been fishing out there. I'd like to. If you have a boat, you want me to go out there and hang out with you uh, and talk some Alabama football, you got a boat, let's let's do it. Uh, and you should see the boats. So, uh, at Goose Pond, which is a very nice golf course, by the way, the boats there are huge. Like, I'm talking, like, houseboats gigantic um hacker music goose pond it's nice i played really nice there too all right um we bring in my boy ty hayes uh wait ty hayes ty what's up man appreciate you being here man good morning to you what's going on man what's going on you know we are talking about um you know I was I was asking the undefeated about the quarterbacks. I'll get your take real quick. Um, we have a couple super chats to get through, so I asked them just the quarterbacks that I've seen here since, since I've been covering the team: Bryce, Jalen Hurts, uh, Tua, and Mac Jones. That that's crazy. And I was asking the undefeated to rank those quarterbacks. Um, Brandon, uh, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Said Bryce won a Heisman with less and did more with a uh, stubborn team than other guys we had with great coordinators. Uh, Brandon also says Bryce did more with less, makes him number one. Natty is a team award. Bryce number one can judge one person 
uh, one position on Natty doesn't work. You know, the thing is, Tua had elite wide receivers. Like, those wide receivers, I get it. The receivers this year are great. They're not what Alabama had at that point in time. It was crazy seeing Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. Like, those guys were unbelievable. Ty, what what was, like, when you kind of look back at the quarterbacks, what, what, what do you remember? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I talked not long ago about the fact that not only has Alabama had a run of, like, 1% athletes at the quarterback position, but it's, like, 1% people at the quarterback position. You look at the type of person Jalen Milrow is. You look at the type of person Bryce is. Tua, Jalen Hurts. Yeah. They've been very fortunate. But if I only had one pick, if you said, hey, uh, A.J. McCarron as well, no doubt about it, Snell's world, mm. no doubt about that. If, if I only had one pick, I'm taking Bryce. And the reason mm. is simple, because we had a guest over on the show on Tuesday, Grandolf, the, the transfer <laughs> yeah. portal wizard. But he can attest to you, Bryce is also a wizard. Uh, Bryce did things that I haven't seen too many other quarterbacks mm. do. And mm. I am under the impression, like I'm under the impression, Kyle, that if Bryce was six foot two, six foot three, 220 mm. pounds, mm. they would have mm. called him a generational quarterback. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. have no doubt about it. And the only reason I don't think he got that label as opposed to someone like a Kyler Murray is Kyler mm. is like a track star, right? Like he could, and yeah. Bryce is mobile. Bryce is elusive, but he mm. didn't have that getaway speed that, Kyler had but what he did have Ooh. is as blessed of an arm as I've ever seen Bryce had an innate ability to manipulate the defense using his legs while keeping his eyes downfield and he could make a throw off of any platform whether that was normal sidearm fading away doing a little jump Bryce I think is the best and, and Kareem, that's, that's not a lot of ifs that's one and that this use this uh, name that they came up with, it never stuck. But Georgia called him this, the gingerbread man. You could not get to him. It was it was amazing. All right, uh, Ty. As we look um, forward to even next week, what are you looking forward to? Like the NFL draft. I was asking the undefeated um, how <clears throat> how they were feeling about uh, Dallas Turner, J.C. Latham, Terrion, and Cole. Let me ask you this. We know that one of those corners will be first round. Is Kool Aid still like a first round guy, in your opinion? Will he go off the board in the first round? If he doesn't, someone needs to be drug tested. Thank you. Uh, so you I mean, this, this, this is easy. Yeah. And I would tell everybody in the undefeated this. The NFL, Brandon, thank you for the 499, saying watched him live in Death Valley when he broke the sack, done the 360 spin, and hit <laughs> Brooks in stride. Bryce is the truth. He did things I've, I've quite frankly just not seen from other mm. quarterbacks, right? Mm. Like the only thing that I think that was the big knock on him was, Hey, he's not the massive hulking figure. That is a Trevor Lawrence or a, you know, some of the other quarterbacks that were labeled generational, but yeah. his arm mm. talent was exceptional. You go back and watch what he did at modern day. And I mean, it was dumb. I mean, he was incredible, but speaking about Kool-Aid, one of the things, and it's a, it's an unfortunate truth that I talk about all the time with the NFL. The NFL and a lot of these scouts, their job is to devalue these players. Mm. And the reason why I say that, you imagine, right? Like there's a campaign right now. We saw it on A.D. Mitchell, right? Some of these scouts are saying, oh, he's a nightmare to deal with. He's this, he's that. Mm. Well, why does that always come out now, right? Think mm. about this. Because if mm. you can get him to slide from maybe a first round guy to a second round guy, you're talking about a cap difference of multiple millions of dollars. And in a mm. league where you're run by the cap, you have got to strategize here. If you can get a $10 million cap difference on a guy you know is a first round player, but you can snag in the second round, that's massive. But it's unfortunate because it comes at the expense of these players who are just trying to live out their dreams. Remember the Laramie Tunsil situation where he had the video come out the night yeah. of? Yeah. All of this is all of this is strategic, ladies and gentlemen, and it's messed up. But I think right now, Kool-Aid, they don't have anything in terms of like, oh, well, we think he's a this type of person, this type of person, or he did this, but they're slowly trying to 
have him fall down the board. That way someone gets a cornerback that they're like, oh, we committed highway robbery in the draft. Kool-Aid is a first round corner. He's got all the intangibles. He's got all the ability. And he's one of the coolest guys out there in terms of like his disposition. He never mm-hmm. panics. And that's what you want from a cornerback. Uh, and you saw, I'm sure everybody saw, I think it was AL.com that originally came up with the video because they're doing, um, and you can watch this on AL.com's YouTube channel. They're doing like a docuseries on Kool-Aid. And you saw that clip, right? Everybody saw it. It was like when he woke up that one day and he's like, oh, hell no. He's like, I'm not going to Auburn. And he calls his mom and he's going to uh, to Alabama. I love that. You know, he, the thing with Kool-Aid is he fit perfectly with Coach Saban. Like, remember his first year? I don't know if you guys remember, but I think it was Touchdown Alabama that got a clip of uh, Coach Saban ripping Kool-Aid. And he liked him. He liked everything about him. And then we just saw Terion just grow, and, you know, I, everybody loves him. You remember that, Byron, right? Remember when he was yelling at Kool-Aid? That was so funny. Uh, but, man, it's – man, it, and it goes by fast. And you know what? Remember when Kool-Aid and Terion both got here, Nate Oates was asked straight straight up, and so were the players, about them playing basketball. Remember? Because each of these guys were incredible athletes. Play, um, like, Terion was a basketball first guy. Now, of course, that all passed, and that was never going to happen because Nate Oates was building this monster over here. Um, but still, you know, that's what it was. Betsy, what's up? Happy Thursday to you. I appreciate you being here. And uh, Brandon uh, has been uh, building the Super Chats by himself. Single-handedly beat UGA, and that was uh, in reference to... Uh, Bryce Young. Yeah, Bryce is a baller. And so cool and so calm and so collective. You never saw him really get stressed out. And that guy handled himself. One of my favorite Alabama moments ever was the year where we were down against Auburn, fourth quarter, and he leads that, what was it, a 90-yard drive? Something like that. And and there's a picture of him. And he just kind of does his this. He looks yeah. up and then he looks at Saban. And he yeah. just has this smile all of a sudden come on his face. Like he was, we're down against Auburn. The season is on the line. If Man. you lose this game, you who knows what happens. And he smiles at yeah. Nick Saban and per- just continues to drive downfield and throw one of the most beautiful strikes that you've ever seen yeah. and that's where i was just like wow and that was different. yeah and that was to uh jacory brooks jacory yeah. brooks rose up in that game and then you think about what happened last year in the laser that Jalen milro threw to isaiah bond you know we we're talking about it I, um, so it's, it's funny that at brian Denny stadium for the for a day they show <laughs> they show the grave digger play but they cut out the la- they cut out the catch so they where, just show Jalen Milrow threw it to himself. It was incredible. Yeah, basically, where he's like being hoisted up. So he threw it, and then whoosh, game they won, and that was it. But there was no like, you know, yeah, he threw it to himself. Thank you. <laughs> and and, and Miss Gordon, she's a hundred percent right. She says Kool Aid broke up a play in that game in the fourth overtime. The next play we scored. That's a hundred percent true. A hundred percent true. That's why I say I think people are kind of overthinking this Kool-Aid situation. He didn't get tested last year. And if you're a cornerback, isn't that the ultimate compliment? Like having a year where your stats might not look too great? It's because they didn't throw your way. Mm -hmm. And if you can shut down half of the field, that's the ultimate compliment as a cornerback. I've I've all I've never understood when we get to the NFL draft and people are like, oh, well. You know, he didn't have 18 pass deflections. Yeah, because they didn't throw his side 18 times all season. So mm. what are we doing here? They didn't want to test him. Mm. EJ Riggins, what's up, man? See you inside the comment box. You don't need to stop playing with Kool-Aid. <laughs> Ebony, what's up? We see you inside the comment box, too. Uh, Dane, Kareem. Uh, Ebony, was cool to rap with you uh, down in uh, Tuscaloosa. That was awesome. All the way from Phoenix. That's amazing. Andy Janet, what's up? Good morning to you. Appreciate you being here with us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Um, Ty, uh, I mean, when you look kind of to the limited numbers of players that have entered the transfer portal, I mean, I, I think there's been like what? Like one from Alabama? Like a lesser known, what was it, wide receiver? James player. 
right? Special teams type player. Thank you. I mean, what does this tell you? I mean, are we still are, are we still kind of watching for you know the next two weeks? I, I mean, has this been a strong message by Coach Kellen Moore? What what's your take on it? Make sense of it. Make sense of this. Oh, I think both things can be true. Listen, it, it's the portal, right? You're gonna be watching mm. and, and understand as more tide or more time. I said more tide as more time goes on. Teams are going to be more desperate more brazen with their NIL packages that they're sending out. So, of course, we, we've got to continue watching until this thing closes. But I also think that this is a strong statement by Kalen DeBoer. I think there are a lot of people out there that were thinking, hey, Alabama's going to have a bunch of teams enter, right? Yeah. Or a bunch of players enter because – Nick Saban's not there anymore. Mm. These players mm. now have been with Kalen DeBoer. I think a lot of our rivals were praying. Yeah. On the fact that like, oh, well, they're not going to mesh with DeBoer and they're going to hit the portal. So far, what we hear is that the players absolutely love this new coaching staff. I mean, everybody you talk to, you get a very similar feedback. And it's that the players are really bought in. They mm -hmm. really enjoy their position coaches. There's a newfound energy in Tuscaloosa. That's not to say that the energy was bad, just that it's different, right? Kalen mm -hmm. DeBoer is a younger guy. They're doing things a little bit differently. They've hired guys mm -hmm. that are much more media savvy in terms of like, for those of mm -hmm. you that know Drewski, one of Drewski's boys is now on staff at Alabama in the media room, right? Like they know what they're doing. They're making some calculated moves here. So, we, of course, we still have to watch. And one thing I would tell everybody in the Undefeated, some of your bigger teams haven't had their spring games yet. So the timing of the spring mm. portal was a little bit interesting because you still have a Michigan, a yeah. Texas, Oklahoma, just to name three, that are having their spring games this weekend. After that, I think we could see some more movement from some other players around the nation. So sit tight. We're only in the very beginning stages. And you know me, Kyle. I, I'm a very big Josh fan. I always am going to speak highly of Josh. Wouldn't put out what he put out for nothing. He no, knows sure. something. Yeah. So I, I'm just waiting. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, what's up, man? Appreciate your support this morning, man. Love saving, but this change was needed. You know, and it and I think it came at a really good time. Um, I I think who knows? I mean, I think you probably could have coached for for longer, hundred percent. I mean. You see the things that he continues to do um, now moving in ESPN. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's not a bad time, you know, for somebody to step away and, and to continue that brand. And, and Kalen DeBoer, you know, clearly um, has huge shoes to try to fill. But I don't think he's going to try to fill them, you know, right away. It's just day by day recruiting, you know, meeting new fans, you know, uh, developing uh, competition, developing the culture. You know, that was his first Beanie Weenies experience as well, you know, with the steak and beans game. Like, so I think, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to to kind of see how this season unfolds. I was talking about the season and kind of the schedule going on, um, you know, before you jumped on. Uh, it's a good schedule. You got Georgia. Uh, you got uh, Wisconsin um, early on in the season on that left side. And then when you look to the Don't that overlook that game half, now. Man, phew. That these games, everybody's schedule is tough. I mean, um, so I would, I mean, the, the old days of like being undefeated and having to make the playoffs, those days are out. Like, not to say that you can lose, like, lose games, but like, you know, what are you going to do? These schedules are ultra hard. Um, hey, fam, will you please support Ty? Like, you guys would support me. I'm going to turn it over to his segment. Um, you know, I appreciate the super chats this morning, Betsy, Brandon. We missed you yesterday, Ty. Figured you out on the, um, you know, prairie or something like that or at the ranch or something. No, no, nothing that exciting. Just had a doctor's appointment that uh, one of those that I didn't think I'd get that early. Really, like I had to drive to Dallas to get there, so it was like an hour to get there, yeah. an hour back. It was, it was a miserable day. Do I'm you sure have? Had um, of fun. Yeah, no, I mean that those are how days are sometimes. When I'm having a bad day, I just go to bed early. Seriously, that that's a that's a pro tip. Like if you're having a bad day and things just start going your way, I'm like I know how to defeat this. Take a hot shower and just go to bed. Start again. Um, hey, Ty, do you have any like horse showings or anything like that exciting like coming up? Or like are we not in season for that? Um, I actually don't know. I know the, the Fort Worth cutting is earlier in the year. Um I know that like some shows around Oklahoma are more in October. 
right now there's a lot of like the baby horses are being born. And mm. so like, I know whenever, you know, when my father was around, when he was alive, he was, and this is crazy, Kyle, one year he was, I think the, he was a top five breeder of quarter horses in the United States. Whoa, crazy. And he did it. He did it with uh 10 brood mares. Number one and number three both had like 50 or a hundred plus, but my dad was very meticulous and he would have entire books of like genetic traits from all of these different stallions. <laughs> and so he would be able to be like, okay, I have this horse. It's a brood mare. That's smart. Little Lena, this, that, and the other, a Hollywood done it. Smart little Lena. And then there's like wimpy's little step. And he's like, well, the wimpies have bad hips or this, that, and the other, you know what I mean? So he would be able Whoa. to like, put it together and so he was very well known for for the babies we would have and a lot of the times sadly i wouldn't get to see them be you know raised because before they were born they were sold oh i'm but, sure yeah 100 percent. yeah, yeah. <sighs> all right fam well uh you guys enjoyed ty's segment you also have a uh, coach smook rolling through at 10 30 um so uh everyone a part of the undefeated i appreciate you guys for supporting us um as news happens we will be uh right on bama football on youtube and uh definitely support uh ty and uh his own youtube channel or you see him on uh, bleacher report around the table sports is a really good youtube channel um ty does an amazing job and uh ty take it away man appreciate that kyle appreciate that and always appreciate you having me on matt happy you're in here kyle la we have Nicole, we have Shane, Jimmy, Sweet Home, J.A. Someone says, is it Grandalf or Grandolf? Or Grandolf? We can settle this today. Listen, it's Grandalf, but he also answers to Grandolf, right? And no, he did not fall through Moria. That's the peasant Gandalf. He couldn't make his way through there. I'm telling you, those documentaries really did something to Gandalf's head. I've had the pleasantries of meeting all of them, and and Grandolf is much more our speed, ladies and gentlemen, much more our speed. Matt, I, I'll tell you, it's funny. My dad grew up right around your neck of the woods. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was born in Scaticoke, right, Green Greenwich area. So like he was from up there, and then moved to uh, Nebraska, and then ended up going into. Um, Texas Crimson Watch says Smart Little Lena is a lot of great cutting horses. Yes, they are. Now, I do you remember the Smart Little Lena Syndicate Crimson Watch? I don't know. Now we're getting into some horse stuff, but if you remember all the drama, my dad was actually on the the Smart Little Lena Syndicate committee. He was one of the main people. It like I have so many. Just there's a there's a show coming out on HBO about a ranch in North Texas that was dealing with some like mob ties. If any of you are ever around North Texas, I can show you exactly where the ranch is. I got some cool stories about the ranch, about, uh, about that whole thing. Right. It was fun growing up in this area. A lot of fun. So, yeah, I mean, someone said they loved quarter horses. They loved team roping. LA said that. Yeah. My dad used to do some, some team roping and stuff. And that was a reason why, he would like go to give you a high five or something and all of his fingers would be in different directions because he broke his fingers so many times from roping. Right. And uh, I, I only have the one. I can only raise this thumb like this. Right. That's 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 my thumbs up on this hand. Broke this thumb doing it. Other than that, you know, it is what it is. Never barrel raced. Never barrel raced. But I did. I did used to show horses. Um, and I actually know quite a few country musicians just from horse shows I've showed against them. Yeah, Shane. No, I'm not. He used to train horses for the four sixes. Um, we actually know quite a few people who were on the show Yellowstone. Um, and he had a horse, I believe, that ended up he sold it to a guy that did a lot of the um, equestrian stuff for Hollywood. And one of those horses ended up in a major movie. And, and I can't remember which one. Um, I, I don't think it was Lord of the Rings, but at the same time, it may have been Lord of the Rings that one of our horses ended up in that movie. Didn't mean to slap the mic, but it was one of those movies. He he'd sold a horse that ended up there. Um, so uh, a lot of you know a lot of crazy stories. Let me find out. No, no, no. I grew up I grew up here in North Texas, but I do know some of the people because one of the cool things about Yellowstone is obviously there are actors, but a lot of the ranch hands they have. 
like, I don't know if y'all know, there's a younger kid. He might be 17 or 18, and he was like a ranch hand. That's Kate. I used to babysit Kate at the horse shows. Like, I, I know Kate. Um, great, great showman. So, yeah, it's uh, a lot of cool stories. But let's transition into some football, right? That's what we're all here for. That's what we're all here for. G-Man Cool says, when will we get commits from the portal, Ty? So, great question, G-Man. And I think right now everybody is kind of underwhelmed by the portal movements, as am I. As am I. Though I still have this uneasy feeling, and I don't know why, that things are coming. I don't necessarily have an uneasy feeling that we as Alabama fans need to worry. That's not my contention here. What I'm saying is I just have this feeling like what Josh Pate was saying, it will come to pass. Now, whether it's as extreme as he said, I don't know. But Josh talks to a lot of people. Josh goes around, does his thing, has been in all of these different buildings, and I just, from knowing Josh and not like personally knowing him, I can't say it's like, oh, he and I have ever gone out to dinner, but we've spoke on the phone a few times. Josh is not the type of person to just throw something out there to get a reaction. That's not how he operates. Josh is going to have principled segments, right? If he says something, it's because he has heard something. And so I think that whenever we see these spring games conclude, a lot of them are happening this weekend, I think once those spring games conclude, we're going to see some names hit the transfer portal. I just think that a lot of these players don't want to just leave before they have their spring games, before they have all that. So I think next week we will see some movement, G-Man. But one thing we do know is that Kalen DeBoer has acknowledged, hey, we need some offensive linemen. Hey, we need some defensive backs. Now, I have gone on record. I have gone on record and stated I think it'll be kind of difficult to make offensive line moves happen in the portal. You're very lucky to get a Caden Proctor. And actually, if we look at 24-7 sports and their transfer portal ratings, right? if we just go to the top players who have entered the transfer portal, Caden Proctor's number two, ladies and gentlemen. Overall, not in the spring window, I mean overall, number two player in the transfer portal coming back to Alabama. And one of the things I talk about ad nauseum is that I think Caden Proctor is going to have a good season ahead of him. He's going to be playing at his natural weight. We asked an 18-year-old kid to play about 20 pounds heavier than he should, and he's still trying to adjust to the speed of college football. It's why as the year went on, you would see him start to pick up these stunts. The Tennessee game is a great example. The Tennessee game, there was a play. And I remember Coach Smook and I were texting back and forth about this play. Because Tennessee was ran two or three stunts at Caden Proctor, going at him. And he picked up every single one of them. Like, that's when Smook and I were texting each other and we were like, hey, he's making the difficult stuff look easy. Like, he's picking up the difficult stuff. But what is it? that was beating him. Well, it was a speed rush, right? You'd look at some of the times he got beat and more often than not, it was either, Hey, there was a miscommunication as to, Oh, I'm supposed to pick up that guy, which that's, 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 it is what it is. Or B it was a simple speed rush. Well, what that told me is a, he's still adjusting to the speed of college football, high school football and college football may as well be two totally different sports. I mean, they're not the same. You, as Caden Proctor, could be blocking me in high school in your Friday Night Lights. And you'll be a five-star, sure. But just because you pancake me, who's 5'11", 165 pounds, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to go out there and pancake some SEC edge who's been in a strength and conditioning room for four years, is a former four-star, five-star. They've adjusted to the speed of the college game. You're still adjusting and then asking him to play above a weight that I believe was conducive to success. Now, understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's just my opinion. But I also think that if we watch the film, it does back up my opinion. He looked leaner in that A-Day picture. 
And I'm very excited about that. Have some questions we're going to hit to. Brandon, thank you for the 199. He says, I'm 50-50. How you feel about Kermani? Kermani McLean is incredibly talented. Really wanted him to come to Alabama the first time. But Brandon, this is my only holdup with Kermani McLean. It's nothing about the things we've heard, right? That's not it. My holdup with Kermani McLean is that we already have young cornerbacks that are super talented. What we don't have is experience. If you get in Kermani McLean, you get a young cornerback who's super talented without experience. And right now, I'm far more interested in seeing if there is a defensive back hit the portal that has that experience because that's what Alabama really needs. Right? Like, I, I think if you can't find someone with experience, you roll out the young cats that you got and let them learn in the fire. But I, I think that it's more of the same, right? Kermani is very talented. He's got very high upside, but he does not have experience. We look at our corners. They are very talented. They have unbelievable upside. And they now have a greater understanding of what Womack wants them to do in this defense. They just don't have experience. I'd rather roll with what we have if we're getting somebody that just doesn't have an overt amount of experience. Lance Hunter asks, any interest in the Colorado tackle? So far, I, I haven't heard much, Lance. There might be some talking, but... I haven't heard too, too much. Ty, it's a good offensive tackle transfer in the portal from Arizona, Jermaine says. I'll have to check him out. I'll have to check him out. Let's see if we can't find some, some stuff about him because that's a position where I think they will hit. Houston, ladies and gentlemen, is ha having quite a few people hit the transfer portal. Houston is getting hit real hard right now. They have had some really talented guys exit louisville getting hit real hard right now offensive tackle from arizona dj warnell yep or is that that's a defensive back never mind do you have the name because i i'm not seeing anything jermaine on on terms of the uh in terms of like the transfer portal lists brandon wilkins says will johnson speculations about him will johnson listen if he hits the transfer portal i mean goodness gracious you 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 jump on that you jump on that Uh, buddy, from you, you're talking about Dominic Williams, the sophomore defensive lineman, six foot two, three hundred and twenty pounds, thirty three tackles this past year, fourteen solo, three sacks. Very, very gifted player. Um, the only thing, Jimmy, is I don't know that Alabama is going to be looking for more defensive front depth. And if I'm not mistaken, Dominic Williams has two visits already set up. One's Oklahoma, one's Texas, so he might be looking to stay a bit closer to home. Colorado has a lot in the uh, in the portal. Run the table. Sports says no, 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 not the CU tackle. Yeah, listen, I it, tackles are very hard to come by in the transfer portal. Um, I I do have a little bit of insight as to what happened at Colorado this past year. Got to talk to some people, and so yeah, I'm uh, interested. That's all I'll say. Interested. Ty, this team has a lot of potential, but there's a lot of questions. Wisconsin is the must-win of the of the season because we can absorb three losses. In the worst case, yeah. Listen, uh, Wisconsin is a game. Do not, do not overlook Wisconsin. Do not overlook Wisconsin. Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was very bad. It was very bad. They were one of two offensive lines that were worse than Alabama's. Alabama's was 129th in the nation. Um, and they were one of two offensive lines that were worse than Alabama's in terms of sacks allowed. Yeah, Colorado, I have a lot of major questions. Yeah, right now in DB from Utah, junior six foot, 185 from IMG. This is where I'm really interested. This is where I'm really interested. Because we know that defensive back 
and offensive line is where they're going to try and add in depth. But I have maintained that I just, man, I just don't know like how many offensive linemen enter the transfer portal and you're instantly like, yeah, we need to get that guy. It'll happen. It can certainly happen. But you also have to either one, get very lucky or two, have a very keen eye for talent. I'll tell you a story. Bill Biedenboe from Oklahoma, the Oklahoma offensive line class or offensive line coach, pulled in an offensive lineman, an offensive lineman who had originally played defensive line, had next to no film. That name is Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton is, uh, you know, looking at the NFL first round. Why did they get that? Because Biedenboe's got a clear and clean eye for talent i mean that guy right there will get three stars and transition them into top two rounds of the nfl draft easy and then you look and they're signing massive contract extensions in the nfl i mean it seems like every guy he sends to the nfl just gets some huge contract extension what are your thoughts on marquise groves killabrew smoke buoy and takario davis i'd really like takario davis run the table sports all good options but i really want takario davis I like the way he plays. Really like the way he plays. Right? I think he has got a lot of upside. He's a long rangey cornerback. Interestingly enough, he has a do not contact thing on his transfer portal entrance. And the reason why that's so interesting to me is because You'd have thought with a do not contact clause that he would have already committed somewhere, but he hasn't. And as I understand it, he has continued to practice with the team. Right. That's that's the part that I think is really odd and cool. And cool. Now, Killebrew is a guy that if, you know, the 24-7 sports composite had him as a top 150 prospect in the nation top 15 cornerback and a top 15 player in the state of Georgia, six foot, 185 pounds. You just want the guys with experience. Yeah. Bill Biedenboe. Bill Biedenboe. Greedy Vance has a ton of experience too. Both guys only five foot 10, but that does. Yeah. Listen, Greedy Vance is a guy that I think Alabama will continue to look at. Um, you, you guys know that there's some defensive backs out there that I really hope enter the transfer portal. Really, really hope they enter the transfer portal. That's that kid from Wisconsin that I really, really hope he enters the transfer portal because he is so productive, man. And I think, I think that he is a guy that is flying under the radar, even in terms on like the national lists and everything like that. That cat's good. Seven interceptions last year, 95 yard pick six, plenty of pass deflections, but he's only five foot 10. But that's one of those situations where I get it in a perfect world. You get the guy like a Taco Davis, right? With the, with the ranginess the you just can't teach, but some guys have ranginess naturally in terms of their size and the other guys play bigger than their height indicates, right? That kid from Wisconsin plays a lot bigger than his height indicates. Max Tooney says, Des Moines Kennedy in the portal. Wow, yeah. Listen, Colorado is uh, an interesting situation to say the least, right? It's hard not to overlook Wisconsin, even for me, but I know that's a mistake. They will come to play. Yeah, that's going to be a game, man. It's going to be a game. No, I think that's a game Alabama wins, but like that's going to be a game. I think I'm very, very happy that it's early on because you get that acclimation period, right? I I love any time you're able to take on a a challenge like that early on. Early on. I really like that. I love having those big games early. Daryl Green wasn't five foot nine, but five foot nine players play. Yeah, some people just play. Majority of the players in the portal so far look to be freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, and that's that's where we're going to have an interesting balancing act occur. Uh, Bama has scholarships to give, Greg. 
Greg asks, Ty, what's our scholarship count? I'm assuming we are waiting to see who shakes out after this weekend before we fill a few available spots. Um, I think that there are something like six or seven free scholarships. If I count Proctor, maybe six, but you, they've got room. They've got room. That's a beautiful place to be too. A beautiful place to be where you can just start handing out scholarships to players. Um, that's what I love. 100% red. 100%. What about J.D. Rhyme from Auburn? If he's transferring from Auburn, unfortunately that rule will prevent us from getting him. From Valdosta. Six foot one, 170 coming out of high school as a prospect, top 200 prospect in the nation. I can't, I can't say what I know about Colorado guys. I, I promised who told me that I wouldn't say the ins and outs of it because they have worked very hard, right? And it would be very easy to kind of locate the source on that. Just know, um, some of the things that happened at Colorado this year were ridiculous, right? Just absolutely ridiculous. You have one of the best offensive minds in the nation and you can't do anything in terms of your offense. You have Sean Lewis. You have Sean Lewis. Great offensive mind, and you can't do... Uh... No, it's, it's not that, Shane. It's not that. It's just the way things went down. It gave me like, oh, wow. It, it happened like that, really? Okay. That I mean, it, it's it's nothing major, but it's enough for someone like me, who's just, you know, college football obsessed, to sit there and be like, okay, well, I definitely have to watch Colorado this year to see, like, how y'all adjust. Because some of the things that happened last year, I think some people were made to be scapegoats. That's all I'll say. That's the most I'll say. I think people were made to be scapegoats. The in the tackle from Arizona name is Joe Borjon, red shirt junior. Let's check him out. Six foot eight, dear lord. Six foot eight. Twenty twenty three appeared in six games, started in the bowl game. Arizona had a decent ranked offensive line, twentieth in the nation. Or 20th ranked offense, uh, 18th scoring offense, but they, they had the uh, Noah Fafita and McMillan. They were so fun to watch. Okay, so he's a Juco guy. Not okay, six foot eight, bigger guy, played in the bowl game. Has some game experience. I mean, you look at the offensive stats for Arizona. They are very impressive. They are very impressive. Offense, Hacker. Very impressive. Yeah, Demoy Kennedy. Um... No, Hunter, you know me, man. I'm I'm no insider. I'm just I read tea leaves, man. I'm I'm just I'm just a fan with a microphone. That's it. I just read tea leaves. Um I just so happen to be as obsessed about college football enough to where I think I can kind of piece things together. Um but I do think that Alabama is going to be much more active next week just because I think next week is going to be much more active for big name players entering the transfer portal. You have spring games this weekend, and you have a lot of teams that haven't had their spring games yet that are over scholarship limit. There are teams over the scholarship limit, and they're going to have to shed players. And they're going to be players not exactly happy. Alabama wide receiver Hayden Neighbors entered the portal as a grad transfer, has picked up offers from Tulane. Hey, I hope he goes on and has a successful career. 
think. I hope he goes on and has a successful career. Listen, I'm I'm about that way about a lot of the guys for Alabama, right? Like, luckily, I think some people. It's all about why you transfer. You know what I mean? It's all about why you transfer. And someone who's just like in a loaded room, and it's like, okay, I'm. It's my time. I'm a grad transfer. And this room is absolutely loaded. I, I wish you all the success. Anybody that's a grad transfer that's just a part of a loaded room, I wish you all the success. Go ball. By all by all means, go ball out. That would make me very happy. Got a DB from USF, Chris Townsell, six foot two, one seventy six. And then there's the Western Kentucky defensive back, who is really talented who I think Alabama is going after. Let me see if I can't pull that name. But I know that guy's really talented. Thought it was Western Kentucky. Yeah, Anthony Johnson Jr. 5'10", 180 pounds from Florida. Really, really has some good film. Has some really good film. Did Tony Mitchell? No, he did not. No, he did not. And the safety from Arizona. Yeah, yep. Yep, Hunter Ray. Hunt, that's exactly who. Uh, you, you beat me to it, my man. You beat me to it. I, I really like the Western Kentucky guy. I think he's very talented. But no, Stephen, um, Tony Mitchell didn't didn't enter the portal. We actually were on a live stream, and Tony Mitchell contacted Coach Smook while we were on live and let him know, hey, that report is capped. So he, he put the kibosh on that real quick. Tank, happy you're in here, my guy. Happy to see you. Redfish says very low completion percentage for AJ Jr. Yeah, he was he was a beast, man. He was an absolute beast. Would really like to add him in. See, that's that's a player that I think is feasible, right? He's got experience. Big time player has proved to be able to convert. I think he's a name to watch out for. I think he's a name to watch out for. Fourth highest rated defensive back. Yeah, really, really a talented cat. And I mean, you just look right now, you just don't have a ton of cornerbacks out there that you're just like, okay, Do they have experience? Do they have this? Because that's what Alabama needs. Alabama doesn't necessarily need another cornerback that doesn't have experience. Because if you're doing that, you might as well roll with what you got. And then we get into the conversation of why are you transferring? And if you're an inexperienced cornerback and you're transferring for playing time, are you going to beat Zay Mincy? Are you going to beat Jaleel Hurley? Are you going to beat Zabian Brown, Jalen Mbakwe? I don't think so. I mean, you'd have to be otherworldly if you do. Good for you. If you do, good for you. But if you're inexperienced, you then are rolling the dice of, are you going to beat out the guys that Alabama has that are inexperienced? Because though they may be inexperienced, they are uber talented. And then if we're talking about more safety players in this defense... Okay, if you're inexperienced, are you going to beat out Red Morgan, Peyton Woodward, Peyton Woodyard? Are you going to be able to beat out Drake Kirkpatrick Jr.? You know. That that's tough. That's why I don't I'm not surprised that Bama hasn't made a move yet, because you gotta be a dude. You gotta be a dude. And these guys entering the transfer portal, they know that. Yes, Alabama needs depth of the defensive back position, no doubt about it. But you got to be a dude. You got to be real sure you're going to come in here and just get one of those spots. Are you going to be able to take the job from a Damani Jackson? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Damani's upside is unreal, ladies and gentlemen. Damani had a really solid spring game. I mean, he ran down two plays. He ran down two plays that would have been touchdowns. He he has got a lot of physicality, and he's only been there for a few months. He's going to continue getting better. That guy has got such high upside, but so do all the defensive backs. And JG, JG, you make a great point. You make a great point. Makes no sense for Bama to grab anyone they don't think is a blue chip slash dog. 100%. Zachary, I'm going to get to your comment. I just want to hit this one right here real quick. Will Johnson is entering the portal. Hunter Ray's <laughs> just doing a little bit of trolling. But hopefully he does hit the portal and come here. 100% Will. Or Hunter. 100%. Jermaine Mims says, we need to go after that guy from Western Kentucky. It seems like they're waiting on the pie in the sky named Will Johnson. I'm wondering about that as well. I'm wondering about that as well. All right, Zachary Wilges, thank you for the 1999. He says, Ty, I sure, I'm sure we will, but if we didn't get a defensive back, would you be concerned? So I think that this is where we get into the nuance of this conversation. And what I mean when I say that is if, Zachary, if, if there's not an experienced guy out there, if there's not that, you know, experience, oh, there we go with Apple. If there's not that experienced guy out there that's going to be able to come in here, as for some reason, Jance is my profile picture. If you don't have the experience to be able to come in here and contribute that way, I wouldn't be upset, Hunter, or or I wouldn't be upset, Zachary. I'm I'm all over the place right now because I'm trying to do like 15 different things at once. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're back. Apologize. That's I called Apple support, and I was like, "Hey, how do I turn this feature off? It it's crashing streams." Come to find out they connect me to some of their engineers and they're like, yeah, this is a bug. Uh, there's no way to turn it off. So we're looking into it. And I was sitting there and I'm like, how in the world does something like this get past stage one of testing? How? But it did. And apparently I'm not the only one that's called. I'm not the only person that's called about the uh, this this problem. Fires me up, my war with Apple. No, Brandon, I don't know. I don't know who they were talking about. I asked them, but I, I never got the answer. I think we got talking about something and uh, didn't ever get the answer. Jeff, member for three months. Thank you for renewing your membership. He says, love being a fan funder, Ty. Great takes as always. Thank you for the support, Jeff. That means the world. It means the world. But Zachary, as we were saying before, you know, my, uh, before my co computer situation, it all depends. If there's not a defensive back that has the experience, then I'm not going to be worried because then it's like, okay, yeah, there just wasn't a better option. Because as I just got done saying, it's, it's one of those things where, if you're going to roll with a guy that doesn't have experience, you, you're going to roll with the guys we have. Because every single guy Bama has that may not have experience has tremendous upside. And I'm of the mindset that's like, okay, well, if, if we're just going to be going on pure upside, I'm just going to give it to the guy that is already on roster, right? Our young guys are studs that can come in and start uh, – I don't know if he's the only guy, Brandon. That kid from Wisconsin is a beast. An absolute monster. Ty, you need to let Grandolph handle Apple. He's going to hex them. Pose says, hate Apple. Listen, Apple works for some people, but I can say that I've done content creation now for a few years. I've done it on Windows, and I've done it on Apple. And one of them has made my life significantly more difficult than the other one. And it's not Windows. I was able to edit quicker, much more powerful. I don't know. And granted, I do have the M1 chip, so that was kind of like their first year doing it, and that could definitely be it. 
but uh yeah i'm also a computer nerd i used to build my own computers and stuff so apple just frustrates me so much neither here nor there as y'all know that i love to say as we hear that Sure. Yep. Man, I wish we can get our hands on Toriano Pride. That'd be great. Ty, who would you say is a home run addition for Bama, for what Bama is trying to do this year? Listen, we've talked about two of the names. If you can get a Ricardo Hallman uh, this weekend, Byron Walker, Wisconsin spring game is this weekend. If you can get a Ricardo Hallman, if you can get a Will Johnson, or a Takario Davis, I think all of those. Zoltar says, too bad Windows laptops can't compete with battery life. I, my, I'm not noticing any difference. But that's also because maybe it's just like doing content creation and doing editing. I have to keep this thing plugged in. But I will say, it, it does have very good battery life. That is true. That is very true. It's just I, I never really noticed battery life, but I will say it does have very good battery life. Now that I really think about it, it makes sense. Ty, with Jalen Hale being hurt, do you think Ryan Hollywood Williams can make an immediate impact or does he need a year? I think he can make an immediate impact, and I think he could have made an immediate impact even with Jalen Hale being there. Haney. Haney. Listen, ladies and gentlemen of the undefeated, I told you. I told you all last week. People thought I was crazy. People thought I was crazy, but I told you Max Holloway would get it done against Justin Gaethje. And I even went so far as to say KO. Now, in fairness, the KO came at one second left in the fifth round. So I got that. That was just extremely lucky. But I did tell you that Max Holloway was going to hit people on notice because he's so good. Go Haney. Go Haney. And the reason is simple, Dwight. I think Ryan Williams is an incredible talent. I think Ryan will. I think Ryan Garcia, geez. We've got some, <laughs> I keep seeing Ryan Williams in chat. Um, I think that you're talking about the Penn State guy. You're talking about the Penn State guy. Jeffrey Elliott says Jermaine Lold from Louisville, defensive tackle. Ah. I think if there's a defensive tackle, it'd be... Dominic Williams. Lowell had a good year in 2019. Hasn't ever replicated what he did in 2019. Um, and he's on a visit to Oklahoma this weekend. Oklahoma only has one defensive lineman returning that has over 100 stats on the year. That's DeJon Terry. And so they're going all in on defensive line. Dominic Williams is a name from TCU. But once again, I think it's the big question of what he cracked the rotation here the same way he could elsewhere and i'm going to be honest i don't think he would I, I don't think he would necessarily beat out tim keenan i don't think that he would beat out jaheem otis i don't think that he would beat out smith justin smith or james smith so at that point it's like i think he's more inclined to transfer somewhere with more linear playing time but i also don't think that we necessarily need interior defensive line um it'd be nice but i just Jeffrey says, was thinking more for depth. Listen, I 100% hear you, Jeffrey, but the problem is, is if he can go somewhere where he's not going to be a just a depth beast, you know what I mean? Like, if he's going somewhere where he could be far more featured than here, I just think he'd be more inclined to do that. Uh, and he already has two visits set up, by the way, Jeffrey, one to Texas, one to Oklahoma. So I think that the situation there is that he wants to be a bit closer to home. Um, and I don't know that he has set up any visits outside of that. Not to say that he won't, but my man, how are we doing today, Coach Smook? What's up, brother? How you feeling? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Can, I do want to hear me good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, sounding okay. good, sounding good. I did want to say okay. this last point about this Garcia Haney fight. For go ahead, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So here's the ultimate reason why I'm going Haney, Dwight. It's because Ryan Garcia is so darn naturally gifted. I mean, one of the more naturally gifted boxers I, I can think of off the top of my head. But when I look at Haney, he has continued to improve 
year after year after year. And he's very naturally gifted as well. I think that we've seen more improvement from Haney than we have seen from Ryan Garcia. That's why I'm taking Devin Haney. I think he's going to get it done. And I think it's going to be nice. I like that cup. Dollar General. Everywhere in tea time, baby. Brandon Wilkins says, Smook, who's the defensive back from the state of Georgia you and Coach Sean was talking about? Also looking at Jimmy Brown's comment, very interesting point about eligibility. Uh, I could remember the kid's name for nothing, bro. Jonte Gilbert. Jonte Gilbert, Jonte okay. Gilbert, yes, uh, the four-star out of um, Atlanta, Georgia. He's actually, I'm actually in Atlanta. Surprise, surprise, boom. And uh, there's a few recruits here in the A that uh, – Saw my Snapchat last night, and uh, they want to talk to Coach Smook, so might be pulling some double business moves down here, um, you know, for the team, making some moves, getting some connections at some of these schools. Uh, already got a few text messages this morning um, about possibly dropping in on some schools tomorrow, you know. So, um, yeah, we working. We working, working. But, yeah, Jonte Gilbert was a was young man. That we were talking about uh 61185 long arms a lot of people thought he was leaning towards clemson um and even thought auburn had a good a good shot at him but um alabama has started to create uh draw a lot of interest from him so uh wouldn't be surprised but he was the one he was the kid out of georgia that said he's not considering georgia that's what made the whole recruiting story or whatever uh the back the background and um but yeah, and then the uh, other kid that's that's committed to Auburn, Devin Williams. Uh, they say he's a hard commit to Auburn, but uh, I think he just put out out of Buford. He just put out his uh, visitation, um, his visiting uh, schedule for the year, uh, the summer, and uh, Alabama's on there. So uh, for an official visit, so you know you never know what can happen when these guys take these. We have guys who are hard commits to us; they're still taking. Uh, visits to these other universities you see it all the time doesn't mean much but um we do know that this is a new staff and they've been doing some pretty different things in recruiting as far as getting guys to decommit getting capturing the attention of recruits who are supposedly hard commit early commits so we got a few questions i wanted to hit first off what you doing down in atlanta just chilling man, listen man you know it's the summertime <laughs> And uh, Bama football on YouTube is is trying to expand. We're trying to do some things. So I'm just looking at the lay of the land, you know, trying to see where uh, Coach Smoot can kind of shake some hands, rub some elbows, you know, do what I do. And then uh, also for some, you know, my, my personal content, too. I got a few meetings set up here uh, for that. So, yeah, we, we working, man. We working, trying to make this thing, solidify this thing. Thanks to Undefeated, man. Like, for real, majority of my fan uh, support base, I don't say fan base, my support base is here with the Undefeated. Um, you all have seen, you know, the Twitter following grow and Instagram is starting to pick up a little bit. So we're uh, meeting with some people to kind of help manage the content side of things, but uh, still maintaining our duties here at Bama Football on YouTube. Um, to continue to provide the inside scoop with recruiting. Lance Hunter says, FYI, that SEC football podcast was trashing. Say, I don't even know who that is. Man, I don't care to listen to those guys. Man, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of channels that like you turn it on and, and you're like, man, if they can have a 85k, I know I'm gonna reach it. You know, like at at some point, if if oh man, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad out here sometimes, but. Hey, it's our entertainment no. at the end of the day. They're a team and they have, I hate to, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yes, I am. They're a team and they have less subscribers than me who does it solo. Sad. 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 And that's Sad. the they thing. Got a whole, they got a whole people behind them and I'm at 21,000. They're at 18 and they have twice the videos I have. Yeah, hey, yeah. Some people just be saying, talking. Ty, people, people just be talking sometimes, but people get tired of talk. People like to see results. That's why I think our channel is continuing to grow because you can go on Twitter, man. You see, you see what happened when me and you make calls about stuff or we, you know, make cryptic posts. It's so many. It used to be so many people come and try to combat it. But now guess who inbox man? I guarantee you if it's something about a recruit come up, I guarantee you I'm going to get 30 bot, 30 uh, DMs, 40 DMs. 
I mean, anything. It could be anything, you know, in, especially inside school. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm humbled by it now. You know, it's one of those things where you know that your hard work is paying off. And like I said, man, it's, it's, it's I'm glad to do it for the Bama fans. You know, I'm not trying to be a uh, haze for or anything. I want to know what's happening here at the University of Alabama. I want to know what's happening in the state of Alabama, all the surrounding pipelines, all of that. That's where I'm trying to grow to. This, uh, Lance, what, what this is, is there are some channels that their their claim to relevance is just by making inflammatory statements. Right? That's that's what they do. Like, if they're not making inflammatory statements, they don't have actual, you know, football to talk about. So they have to just make a bunch of inflammatory statements. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they're not really talking ball. Isn't that the guy yeah. that had to dress up like a clown multiple times last year because he kept calling everything wrong? I'll just mm -hmm. put it like this. You know, we, we talk ball over here. Well, he was dressing up like a clown. I think I picked for Bleach Report 133 games. I went 108 and 25. I didn't have uh, to dress up like a clown. What 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 was my uh, – dang, I think I was like four games behind you, Ty. Uh, on that pick them. I got, we got to, uh, I think we need to make it public this year. I think that need to be like, you get JP and all them, and we just get a, like a, a, a pod, a podcast of us together and meet weekly to figure, you know, keep our record together. Not still in, the, you know, the main network I do, but doing it our way, the way we do it, man. I think that'll be good, bro. Yeah, I brought I, home I, gold be, last year, ladies and gentlemen. Why I be keep, I keep giving these rubberneckers our ideas, bro. I just be, I'd be forgetting. We I mean, lied. they can take the idea. They can take the idea, but can they do it like we can? Ooh, hey, I ain't gonna lie, Ty. We we ain't never took a day to just pop our stuff before. You know that we just we we really ain't just took a day. Undefeated said it. They got on to us a couple days ago. <laughs> Auntie Janet, you caught that? They caught on. They caught on to us a couple days ago, man. Talking about how you know we don't take enough credit for what we do. And and I I thought about it. I was like, man, we give so much praise to each other. We ain't never just as a team said, man, we really some hot stuff. You know what I'm saying? We some hot S-H-I-T. I ain't going to say it, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to be good up in Atlanta. But, you Bro, know. You know me. I'm just moved by football. I'm not yeah. moved by all the drama. All the lot extra of that, like, stuff. I just want to talk football. Like, are we talking about talking how the 425? Football. Are we going to talk about how the 425 is going to contribute to Alabama's defense and how viable it can be in the SEC? Because if they're not having that conversation, I'm not interested. If they're not talking about how to how to work a levels concept in this DeBoer scheme, uh, uh, or or a mesh concept, the the different variations of how he runs off mesh concepts, still using inside zone run game block scheme, that's crazy. Who sat down and, and came up with that? That's hot, bro. I'm telling you, Kelly DeBoer, he did he brought the video game to college football and made it realistic, man. I'm telling you, man. Pulling your strong side guard to the weak side on the on a reaction, just to pull out of it and hit a second phase concept pass rock pass scheme, that is crazy to me. Double move one on one. You give me the one on one out of my 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 trip set, and because your linebacker and your safety paid attention to this off motion, you gave me two one on ones for my quarterback to choose from. Man, this this dude is a, a a genius when it comes to scheming up this offense, man. Shouts out to everybody in the undefeated. Undefeated, I said undefeated. Undefeated, man. I see y'all giving shout outs, man. But you know, I'm gonna do it all our shout outs once uh once we transition. But I appreciate y'all for showing love. I love y'all, man. And just like Jawan said, run the likes up in the chat, man. Run the likes up on the stream. We got all these people in here, 240 people. I think we was at 140 some likes when I last checked. So y'all make sure y'all run the likes up. We greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel. It's a free way to help the channel. Keep us going. Keep the algorithm going. Getting people's, un, you know, trying to, uh, all it does is promote people to see like, what's all the likes over here for? What are they doing? And they come over here and get the same fire content y'all getting. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Share. Me and Ty, we, we, we got enough going around for everybody. So run the likes up. Yeah. <laughs> All I do is talk football into a microphone. My problem is, is I'm hardly even on Twitter. The only th place you can find me is either here on my channel or on Bleach Report talking football. That's yeah. that's all I I do. I'm I need to get better at Twitter. Coach Smook is always mm -hmm. after me about my Twitter presence, and I'm just like, but but I hate them so much. <laughs> I hate Man. these people on Twitter who just like 
because it, it's just like we talked about. So many people just trying to make inflammatory statements are just not talking ball. And I just want to talk football, man. That's all I care about. Ty, Ty, I'm going to make sure um, I promote you enough on Twitter so that somebody can create a fake account, a burner account, a Ty Hayes burner account. I have a I have a Coach Smoot burner. That's how you know you made it. And and the and the the handle on it is Iowa Proctor. So Iowa it's somebody, Proctor. it's somebody that was mad about my Caden uh, Proctor take, bro, and they make it so obvious. So I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's, awesome, that's pretty bro. good. I, I I followed the page. I followed the page. I wasn't mad. Like I found it so funny, bro. And it got like 149 followers, bro. That's good, bro. I was like, <laughs> I, I couldn't be mad, like. There are adult people in this world that will sit around and get so extravagant to like try to get under folks. And that jump, man, it, it made me laugh. I told my they got bro one of Brody too. Brody Smoot. They got it's called uh Brody's Missus. <laughs> like all his when he calls, you know, they try to say he be making calls. Well, he don't be making calls, he just be reporting information, like he follows stuff, you know. If if a player that's interested in Alabama follows everybody, every player on Alabama's roster, that's something to look at. So he'll he'll put a post out about it. And then if he doesn't commit to Bama, they'd be like, oh, he missed on that one. How'd I miss? He did follow all these guys. It's right here on, on Instagram. What do you what do you mean? And so it's it's just it's funny, but it's sad. It's, it to me, it's comical. It's comical at the end of the day. I just want to talk football, give my takes, you know what I'm saying? Personal opinions. They it is what it is. It's an opinion. You know, I, that's why I love coming here. We can agree to disagree and keep it moving. At the end of the day, it's roll tight, you know? Here's a question, Smook, that I, I think the people want talked about, and I think it's a great conversation. There has been a lot of talk on these social media platforms about Juju taking the visit to Auburn, who has the inside track. I'll, I'll let you start with this one, Coach, because you, you, you have the inside information on this. So talk to me about what you know, what you're feeling on this. Uh, I'm feeling. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I know. I know that Juju is uh, seriously uh, contemplating that decommitment from USC after the conversation with Kalen DeBoer uh, and Nick Sheridan and his staff. You see, he came back twice. I think in a matter of 14 days, he had made trips to Alabama. Like, uh, and, and there's there's some serious consideration. There's some serious thoughts being had. Um, to me, honestly, I think the Auburn hype is just what they do. They they got beat writers and things of that nature who look at anything from a recruit and they hype it up. You know, um, Ju I don't think Juju has any, any interest in playing in that system over at Auburn. Um, I mean, you got some wide receivers over there, but let's be realistic here. Who is more set up to provide that type of success that Juju Lewis skill set fits, right? And where would he realistically get an opportunity to compete for a squad, for a team that's going to have all the assets already set up around him? It's only one place right now with the roster that's fit. Georgia's not that place. Auburn's not that place. USC's not that place. Alabama is that place. You look at the class of 25 that we're securing right now, especially the 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 special the uh the specialty positions, the wide receivers, the running backs. You look at the defensive players that we're recruiting, the athletes that we're recruiting. I mean, it's shaping up to be a super team made for them. So, um, and then you got a guy like Ryan Williams who reclassed to come in a, a year early. Who you expect to be a, a a a a impact this year, but to be one of the lead primary targets next year, um, and Juju will have a chance to come in and compete his first year. May not make it, you know, with a guy like Ty Simpson being on roster, or or even um, if Dylan Lonergan continues to stay, even with Austin Mack, he got time to grow. But a guy like Juju will come in and challenge a guy like Austin Mack, and so I think he's realistically looking at this two years from now as being the starter of the University of Alabama. And one thing that I'd add on to that, I know there were some people worried about, oh, he doesn't have a, an official planned Alabama yet. I have always been of the mindset that officials are a little bit overrated. Let me explain why. If a kid is willing to use their own money, if a family is willing to use their own money to go to a university, mm -hmm. that might mean a little bit more to me. Let me ask yes. you something. Everybody in the undefeated. <laughs> What, what are you more likely, right? Like, if you really want to do something, if you really want to go somewhere, are you more likely? Like, obviously, if you get the free trip, you're going to take the free trip. But what would you say means that you want it more? If you pay to go somewhere or if you're handed a ticket to go somewhere? 
if you pay to go somewhere, you want to go, right? Like in terms of like, oh, I want to go see what it's about. He's making a lot of unofficial visits to Alabama. And the other thing I would say is if Alabama's in a situation where they get the last official visit, watch out. Right now, he still has one more official on the table that is not planned. He has four of his five planned. I think the Georgia one will probably get moved, right? I don't think that'll happen. But if Alabama gets an official visit, let it be the last one. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, 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 I like your first point, Ty. The fact that they're taking their own uh, their own money, their own time to come, the amount of times that they've come since this new staff has been in place. For a while, it was it was if we could even get a look. You remember? And now, not only was there a look, he I mean, a, a, a turn and burn. You get what I'm saying? They spent the block very, very quickly, you know? So it's one of those things where you kind of, you're kind of looking at the writing on the wall and Juju's a smart, a smart guy. He's going to look at the schematics of, of, of offense. That's what's going to be the key into gaining his attention. And once he sees how Jalen Miro and Ty Simpson take to this offense, Juju has a skill set, an uh, arm talent that, that I believe if you, if you throw him in that room right now, he can compete on from an arm talent perspective. Juju has an arm, man. He has arm talent. His placement of the ball, his delivery, I mean, his release, quick release. And, and we know he he can extend the pocket. He's not more so a dual threat quarterback, but he can be. You get what I'm saying? He gives me, you know what? If I had to give him a, a, a recent QB comparison and style of play, not necessarily the makeup, but style of play, he reminds me so much of Jaden Daniels. And you, just imagine J, Jaden Daniels and Kalen DeBoer's offense. You saw what he did at LSU. Imagine Jaden Daniels at Washington where Penix was. Jaden Daniels had the legs were there, the the arm. I mean, to me, better arm talent than, than Michael Penix. You know, the vision was there. Jaden Daniels was a complete quarterback. He was a complete dual threat quarterback at that. So, I mean, you look at Juju Lewis, some of the same, same makeup marks, you know, some of the same traits. It, it makes sense, man. It makes sense for him to see that the most value that could be created for him right now is trying to get under Kalen DeBoer's offensive system. Yeah, there's only a few offenses out there, right? Um, Adam saying, I think he would excel under Lincoln Riley. Listen, Lincoln's a I great offensive seen, mind, but you know, I haven't seen it, Lincoln develop a quarterback yet. I haven't seen it. Hmm. I haven't seen it. Did, I who you look at who, who is like he Baker? developed? Baker, yeah, he uh, I think him. you he saw a massive. Baker. Oh no, Baker was a much different player from the player he got handed. Much different. Um, Kyler, Kyler is another player who massively progressed under him, and there's a reason why Nick Saban himself looked at Jalen Hurts and said, "Who's developing quarterbacks better than anybody right now?" He said, "Lincoln Riley." He said, "Well, then let's get you to Oklahoma." I give credit to those guys, and this is the debate we we had this before. I give credit to those guys taking that year. To get that knocking, get that experience, and now you go and you find the offensive coordinator who uses the assets around them to cater to the quarterback. Because I I, I saw more progression in Jalen Hurts the year before he left Alabama than when he got to Oklahoma. You know, I I just seen an offensive play calling system that matched Jalen Hurts' skill set on a more consistent basis, and then that entailed a lot of him to develop. So um, I think that's also part about. of development, though. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like if you're putting you somebody in a conducive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's the only thing. Um, I do agree with you. I, I don't think that, like, I think there's a balancing act, right? Like, yeah. I, I disagree with you in part, but not in totality. Um, right. Because it's, and the reason I say that, I think Kalen DeBoer is every bit the quarterback whisperer that Lincoln Riley is, right? I also think Riley is very dependent on a very certain type of quarterback. And if he doesn't yeah. have that very certain type of quarterback, it doesn't look as good. Okay, here's a prime example. Spencer Rattler. Spencer yeah. went to South Carolina this past year and looked great. I mean, First Spencer round. has some of the best throws in all of college football last year. But under Riley, he looked like a deer in the headlights because he needs, Brandon says it, a mobile quarterback if he doesn't right. have that it, so that's where i i agree with you coach like i think that his developmental allure is a what, little bit over what he develops what he develops let's say if he's the best mobile quarterback developer 
I'll give him that. I, I could let him have that. But to say he just develops quarterbacks like that, that, fair, that is fair, just, fair, fair. I mean, I, I've seen Kalen DeBoer do it at San Jose State. Take a, take a quarterback that literally was getting nobody. Nobody was getting looks. And then he goes nine and nine and four or nine and three with Kalen DeBoer. Jumps in the portal. One of our most highly top. You get what I'm saying? And then Michael Penix. Same thing. You seen Michael Penix game totally change from Indiana to Washington. So, I mean, that's that's where I see the difference. But I, I like on your end, Lincoln Riley knows how to set up everything around a mobile that's quarterback it. to make him, you know, get to the next level. Because I don't believe Jalen Hurts could have came back and challenged Tua and been able to have the same type of success if he had stayed at Alabama. He had to go to Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley was like, hey, this is how you get a, a mobile quarterback to start going through his reason. His progression is better. You, you you don't just divide the field in half. You divide the field in half and tell him to press the pocket and do what he does when he gets in trouble. That's way when he does drop back. You got safeties and linebackers looking at him, and now we got these quick receivers in space faster. Now we got them quick pitching. Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma that year, bunch of under 15s, bunch of under 12s, you know, quick dump offs, quick screens. So, I mean, Lincoln Riley, and then his schematics of, of his pass skills too, man. Extension of the run game, uh, play caller. It's, it's it's almost second and none. I think I give I maybe give Sarkeesian the schematics. Oh Ed, yeah, I think Sark over Riley. Yeah, yeah. I mean the schematics set, but Riley's right up in the mix with it. Right up in the mix. Yeah, that that's why it's 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 if he's if Juju's gonna flip, I think Kalen DeBoer makes the most sense because if we're talking, and you make a great point, Coach. It's something that as we're sitting here talking about, I. I, I while I do believe Riley, once he has a quarterback that fits his scheme, he can develop them. Is it more that he's developing them in terms of like taking them to the next level? Or is it that the scheme allows them to go yeah. to a new level? I think that's a really interesting conversation point. I, I do actually agree with you there. But you, you know like, what? And I like debating with you because that just talking football, this is what I like to say talking facts and like realistic football sense it makes me think on the level to where I can project it that way because I've never I, – I think I've said it in the past, Lincoln Riley don't develop quarterbacks, but because I was able to hear your points and say, okay, that makes sense, but think about it now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying he doesn't develop quarterbacks. It's just you brought it out, the type of quarterback. Boom. Exactly. I've never seen him develop a pocket pa a pocket passer. I've never seen him develop – you get what I'm saying? True. So that – that, that's what that's why I like, man. I, I like that type of debate. So for all y'all debaters out there, that was textbook one on one. How to, you know, agree to disagree, because at the end of the day, it, the question was, can he develop quarterbacks? And now we got a whole new argument because of the type of quarterback. You know what I'm saying? We don't have one set quarterback in this game today. So it's, it's, it's well, a good that's debate. the beautiful thing, man. It's just like and we talked about this before. You and I might not agree on everything, but when we sit down and talk. We're going to arrive at a conclusion where it's like, oh yeah, no, I, I didn't, I didn't actually think about that. Yeah. That's a really good point. <laughs> right. And you're going to be the same way. And then it's like, oh well, now, now we have a totally different discussion that's now taken place. And it's like based off of the agreements that we've came to. That's what makes this so much fun. Now that's that off season stuff, man. That's that off yes. season. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get ready for off season. We in our spring training now. We're trying to get ready for off season to debate some topics and stuff, y'all. So I gotta bear with us. <laughs> Someone said, Who has a better system, DeBoer or Sark? I think they're really similar. Like yep. the more I break down of DeBoer, the more I'm like, I'm not saying they're totally based all in the same route, but I think okay, here's what I mean when I say this. To me, Sarkeesian is someone who does what I like to call developmental play calling. Um, mm -hmm. It's all based on creating assumptions. And he wants to get all of these assumptions laid forth. That's why his use of pre-snap motion is beautiful. To get the defense to then bite. It's not that maybe his first five play calls are all directed at getting a first down or even a touchdown. They're directed at planting a seed in the defense's mind that then he'll take advantage of later. DeBoer does something much similar, right? Like a different way of going about it. But at the end of the day, it's all based on this foundation, this belief of foundational play calling to create assumptions that we will then take advantage of. That's why, to me, they're very analogous. Now, one thing I will say, I think DeBoer does better than Sark 
is in-game adjustments. Mm -hmm. Sark has the most beautiful opening scripts, I think, in football. Like, his first 15 plays are clinic, right? Like, you, yeah, you yeah, teach yeah. tape. But DeBoer, I feel like, understands the ebbs and flows very well of a football mm -hmm. game, and he can adjust. Um, and Sark, granted, this past year, he did show more adjustment. He is learning, but that's a great question. Redfish asked, where does Lane rank on this list? I would I, take DeBoer or Sark over Lane. Over Lane, either. I think I'll take Leak and Riley over Lane. I mean, and that's just, he, I mean, to when you're talking about balance and learning, like getting out of your own way, I've seen Lincoln Riley get out of his own way. He's just been, he's ha played against teams where his defense just didn't provide him the, the, the opportunities to, to allow his offense to stay on pace or stay. You, you look at uh, Lane Kiffin. I mean, he had the talent on the defensive side, but he never played caught to help his defense as much of a fire of, of a threat. His offenses have been in recent years at Ole Miss. He doesn't call plays to protect his defense. He could have a 41-point lead, and Lane Kiffin will not lean on his run game, which got him in possession of the league. He'll put it on his quarterback to continue to make plays, and that will always put him in positions to where they start again. You got injuries, unnecessary uh, foul calls. I mean, everything that happens because of his mindset of, hey, pedal to the metal. And you know what? DeBoer is pedal to the metal, but guess what? DeBoer will pedal to the metal, and it'd be 50 miles, be a, 100 miles per hour, and his pedal to the metal could be 60 miles per hour. It's just the way he hits you is like there's no stop. That's what his pedal to the metal is. And then you got Sarkeesian, like you just said, start fast, and then what's happening? Like, the, you only go run that high-low concept so many times. You're only going to get somebody biting on that play-action high-low concept so many times. You're only going to get, you know, the, the, the rollout levels. So many times where you leak in the tight end backside, you're only going to get that so many times. Like Sark, you're, you you have been replicated at this point. Where are your in game adjustments? And and look at the Texas and Washington game. Perfect example. Two offenses, high power offenses. One legit defense on the other side. Whose defense had more fits? Come on now. And Washington's defense. Washington's defense didn't start strong, but you saw what happened in the middle of that second quarter. That's all about Kalen DeBoer's ability to adjust, not just on the offensive side, but on the defensive side too. But offensively, man, you can't you can't keep pace with what Kalen DeBoer does. Once you allow him a six play repetition where he's like locked in, it's kind of hard to stop. I think last year, uh, Ty, they went on a streak of, uh, I think it was like seventy four plays of positive, seventy four straight plays of positive game, seventy four straight plays. A positive game that's run and pass plays between two games 74 straight plays it started in the second quarter of one game and went all the way to the third quarter of the next game where they had positive game you know i, I wanted to five. highlight this comment right here coach because mm -hmm. i think it also supports your argument um about about lincoln david saying um that lincoln is a guy that has a scheme and a system as opposed to DeBoer having the ability to switch his scheme relative to the skill set of the players he have, whereas Lincoln yeah. is more reliant on it. And that to me is a hundred percent true. I think yeah. that's a, that's a hundred percent true. And that really supports the argument you brought to the table uh, about Lincoln Riley earlier. I think that's a great comment, David. Yeah. Uh, Coach Smoot, he said, uh, Davis, what's up, my guy? I always come in with some, some hard counter arguments for me. He says, Coach Mooks, that's what Lane did to cost us the playoff game against Ohio State. We had a big lead, average of five yards of carry, and wouldn't run the ball. Oh, I thought he was coming to Coach Coaches with too much me. ego. No, my, my mean, thing with Lane is Lane's brilliant. But the difference yeah. between Sarkeesian and Lane is Sark is buttoned up. Sark yes. is more interested in winning games than proving a point. Here's a great, here's a great uh, example. This past year, Ole Miss's offense was really darn good. And they played Alabama, and Alabama stopped what Lane wanted to do. And instead of adjusting, it was almost like he wanted to prove, no, 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 no. No, it'll work. It'll work. We just need to keep doing it. Well, then you look up, and the fourth quarter is over with, and you've lost the game. And it's like, ah, coaching with ego got me the loss, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I, I think DeBoer and uh, Sark are, are, are 
not that I think that their offensive schemes are just any crisper because Lane's got a beautiful offensive scheme. I just think that their approach to the game, their their understanding of the ebbs and the flows of the game is better than Lane. I love Lane, but he coaches with ego. And that's why I was like, I'd, I'd rather have DeBoer. I, and I think a lot of people be like, man, y'all didn't even know who Kalen DeBoer was. Actually, we did know who Kalen DeBoer was when he was at Indiana. And in that first that that first ever seven and, or was it six and zero stretch, they were the number four ranked offense between uh, through the first six six weeks of the season. That's when he and Kane Womack started turning heads towards Indiana, and literally could not pay attention to him. Why? Because they moved on to make take on uh bigger roles, bigger. Di- Lane is too spicy. Yeah, Lane Lane get way too spicy. Spicy, look spicy so- Lane. What up, Casey? One of them inherited a program that doesn't have like was four and eight, and he took him to a national championship in two years. That would be my evidence, Adam. Hmm. Like just and, and you know, it's just he he inherited a program that was run by a defensive minded guy in Jimmy Lake. They were four yeah. and eight, and he instantly turned it around. And the first year, they went from a terrible offense to one of the greatest offenses in the nation. And speaking about like people saying. If you were over at Around the Table Sports and you were there for any of the Monday night streams over the course Uh, of the past two years, Jance and I were screaming, uh, hey, if you're not watching watching Washington and DeBoer and Penix, you're missing out because it's some of the most entertaining football out there right now. Jance and I had a meltdown, not this past year, but the previous year when Penix didn't make it to New York for the Heisman. Jance and I had an actual meltdown on stream. Like we were mad do you remember when i came in there and i come and i said i ain't gonna lie that was late night watched him game starting to become real interesting i remember i came in there and said that i think that was not even last year it had to be two years ago now right two years ago now right it had to be because they were playing who's watching the play was it wazdu they had like the the espn college game day that game yep. was so crazy. That's when I was like, man. And everybody's like, it's just pack ball. Nah, man. Kalen the boy is doing something crazy different. And who would think, man? And then you know what really made me turn my head back that way again when Coach uh Saban went for Ryan Grubb last year before we got Tommy Reese. That's when I turned my head that way again. So I mean, so this I- ain't nothing new to them. I'll hop out of here after this comment, Coach. Let you do your segment. Dwight says, the only thing I worry about is that Coach KD hasn't stayed at a school for over three years, right, if I'm not mistaken. While that might be true, he hasn't stayed anywhere long, it's because he's continued to move up. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, Bama, you're not moving up unless you're going to the NFL. And if you enjoy college football, you're not moving up. K Spray says... Do you think that Saban already had Coach KD in mind before retiring? 100%. And the reason why I believe that is because the year before, he was after the offensive coordinator. The day before he retired, he was reportedly on the phone with none other than Jamarcus Shepard. And when he retired, the the plane was already in Seattle and they were already talking to KD. They knew. They knew. In my opinion, they knew. And people... uh... And people always try to like twist and turn these words. So they talked about, um, you see, they was talking about Coach Sarkeesian. Um, you know, he said he t- he thought sixty seconds about to take. It, nobody ever said in the article that he was ever offered the position. Nobody, nobody said it. He said, "What would it be like to fill those shoes?" He said he thought about it for sixty seconds. If he had gotten the opportunity, would he have taken it? You know, I don't think so. I don't think Sark could handle that. And it's also one of those things of like, it didn't make sense for Sark because right now he's being known as the guy who's rebuilding Texas. He's Texas. Right? Like he's bringing Texas out of the dark decade. Did you know that there was like a 10 year period from Vince Young until I believe it was like 2017, they didn't have a first round offensive player drafted. Right. And like now you look at Texas and Sark is doing really good work there. I mean, you look at the way they've developed guys, the way they're recruiting more cohesive classes. It wouldn't make sense because he is known at a university where they can pay him anything, anything Um, that he's the guy rebuilding it. Right. That means that he's got less pressure because he's already kind of broke through that proverbial glass ceiling, not of winning national championships, 
but at least getting Texas back to a game where it's like, ah, it's Texas. They're doing some things now. Now, I am interested to see how he's going to do this year now that he's lost some key pieces to that staff, like a Bo Davis, right? right. Interested in that. But, Coach, right, I'll tell you what right. I'm really interested in, and that's What's your that? segment coming up because I know <laughs> you are going to bring it. You are going to kill it as always, man. I love getting to sit up here and have these talks with you because, man. ladies and gentlemen of the undefeated, this is what Coach and I have always told you. Coach and I agree on 999 I'd say, percent of, of our college football takes. But even if we have the 0.1% we don't agree on, this is how we talk about it, and we arrive at some really cool conversations because we both just love talking football and learning about football. And that's why I think we, uh, we've we got a, a great ability to create great content together, my man. But I'm very interested in seeing your segment. Kill it as always. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know, it's time for the Smook Scoop. Man, what's up, man? Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Ty, my brother. Always doing this thing, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging on and and you know watching us dialogue. Me and Ty, that's that's how we met, man. We were on a uh, segment together. I have been watching a few pieces of his content. I mean, and and it just got caught on when it came up to talking about um, Will Anderson. He posted a video about Will Anderson, and I remember tapping into that that video there, and uh. You know, that's when I really like started following him. And then when we got him over on the other network I used to be on, it was like, boom, we clicked right there. So, uh, and, and it was because of debatable points like that. And at that time, it was us against, you know, majority of the panel because, you know, logic just didn't seem to set in on a lot of those topics. Um, and so, you know, we brought the facts, you know, and that's what we like to discuss is facts, um, perspective. And, and facts is two different things, but you can definitely have a factual perspective, right? Um, and and that's based off of facts. So uh, before we jump into the to the callouts and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and run a uh, you know show some love to our sponsors. Y'all know we gotta show some love to our sponsors. We gotta pay some bills, make sure they get their recognition because we do appreciate everything that they do for us. Let me get this comment out the way, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the commercial, man. Y'all take it away. And y'all know what time it is, man. Y'all go ahead, hashtag that thing. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the... Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bambo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com, use the promo code Bambo. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right if you want to go through the different levels. We have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Moon Rocker. Boy, you got me today, boy. You got me today. I ain't even going to lie. Moon Rocker got me today, y'all. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I got to find it. Oh, man. Here you go. The fact... <laughs> oh, man. I'm weak, bro. I'm weak. Oh, man. Oh, Moon Rocker, you got me today, bro. You messed up the whole segment. Oh, this boy crazy, y'all. That boy crazy, man. Hey, Ebony, me too, right? 
Oh man. Ah. Oh. What up, Poetic Injustice? What's up, everybody? Y'all run up the cold smoke emojis. Let's get these shout outs going, man. Moon Rocky, you took the day, my boy. You took the day. I ain't even gonna cap. My boy I took the day. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Let me pull up my graphic. Oh man, my stomach hurt all week, boy. Whoo, that boy crazy. That boy, that boy. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. Help us. We got some special people in the chat. Lord. <laughs> We go C B D. Just because you spelled it like that's how he said it though. Oh man, give me that is zoom button. Okay, there we go. Oh that boy fool, man. I'm weak, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. Matt, what's good? Tim, what's good? Zachary, how you feeling? Marquita, what's up, fam? Nicole, Cynthia, what's good? Bino. Ebony, what's good? Everybody in the chat, man. Y'all, I'm weak. I cannot lie. I cannot lie. Auntie Janet, Adam, what's good, man? Uh, Antoine, my brother, man. <laughs> Moon Rockers in the building for real, man. Moon Rocker, Kevin, what's good, my guy? Appreciate y'all, man. Yes, yes. Uh, KT in the chat. Chris from New Jersey, what's good? Maddie. What's good, man? Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's still morning for y'all. It's afternoon for me. It's noon. I'm on the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? We out here on the East Side, baby. You know, we we holding it down. Uh, I ain't on that Central Time right now. I, actually, man, that, I felt that extra hour. I ain't even gonna cap. That little hour difference, you feel it. Is 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 way better waking up in the morning. But uh, yeah, man, appreciate y'all, man. The, the cool show. What's good, fam? Oh man. I gotta collect myself, y'all. Steven Angle in the chat. Welcome back, my brother. Rocket Town. What's good, man? Oh man, y'all some y'all, y'all just y'all just don't know, man. Y'all do it every day, man. I appreciate y'all. What's up, Pop? Dad, check this out, man. This boy Moon Rocker. You met Moon Rocker. You remember Moon Rocker Pops? This boy the type of <laughs> that legal CBD, right? CBD. Hey, did we hit the super chat? Hey, coach, I remember when Keeley first come to Alabama, he said he would be the next Will Anderson. So I was wondering why would they move him inside instead of keeping him outside if that's what he's best at pass rushing. Marcus McCants, $20 super chat. Uh, Marcus McCants, in this scheme, in this 425 scheme, man, just to kind of dive into a quick conversation and to kind of turn the page from the illegal CBD, thank you for your $20 super chat and thank you for being a fan funder of the channel. My personal opinion when it comes to Keeley in this scheme, man, at the bandit and the wolf position, you have to be able to not only pass rush, you got to be able to seal the edge. And sometimes that requires dirty work. And, you know, you got to be a different type of dude to do the dirty work. Sometimes the dirty work is not to get to the running back. Also, you have to be disciplined on your stunts and your twists. Uh, Keeley gets real high when it's time for him to get mobile. Uh, his pad level tends to get away from him. He gets a little too high on his pad level. But he's a specimen. Like, you look at him, man. He's sizable. I think he's like 6'4", 6'5", like 245, 250. The kid can get up. I think he's running like a 4'6", 459, 40. For a kid his size that's strong, for a young man his size that's, that's, that's big and fast. Um, Technique-wise, he's just struggling with some of the technique that you need to be able to play on the edge in this scheme. Now, the reason I think it would possibly be a possible it would be a possibility that he jumps in the portal is because one there are other schemes that need a skill set like his right there are other schemes one being ohio state they 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 scheme to the likes of what he does best so it wouldn't be a surprise for me to see him enter the portal and possibly look at ohio state so that's just a quick um discussion or answer on it uh, and, and that's not to say Kiwi's not a good player. I think he could develop into any scheme he wants to, you know, if he if he wanted to. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I just I just don't I don't see why um, he wouldn't give it a, a full season before. And it's not I even I haven't even heard that he's in the portal yet. I'm just saying it was a lot of buzz about him wanting to be uh, be in the portal. Yeah, my pops in here, y'all. Um, I want to know what Bama trade us, Tony Mitchell and Jaheim Otis. Uh, Darius, we ain't got nothing for Georgia, man. Tony Mitchell said he ain't going nowhere. Uh, Jaheim Otis is laughing at the thoughts of him entering the portal like that. Like, it was funny to see that reaction from him. 
um during spring ball when he was you know up and down doing his uh his rehab uh as you know he had an off-season operation and um you know i think we know what jaheem oldest brings to the table i think this year's uh defensive line rotation that's the key to keep guys like oldest and keenan uh fresh you know keep them under 35 40 snaps keeping 35 40 snaps a game max right um you 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 lighten that workload you allow them to be explosive a lot more explosive throughout the game knowing that you got guys behind them that can provide that same support but yeah appreciate y'all shouting out my folks man for everybody that, that got to meet my parents my mom and my dad they uh they they said to tell y'all thank y'all for y'all showing them love y'all gave them you know y'all showed them a good time and what's crazy is you would have thought we had done this uh Oh yeah, Ty. Shout out to my brother Ty Hayes, man. He always sending words of encouragement. Very appreciative to be able to share the uh platform with that that gentleman right there. That's my brother. I mean, from day one. I think me and Ty, I I, I we've had some disagreements and saw some, you know, seen things, had different viewpoints on different situations. But one thing we've always had for each other is respect, and we respect what each other do. So shout out to him. But also from my parents, y'all everybody that showed up and showed out for outside with coach smoot man hey i appreciate y'all and uh yeah i got an announcement i'm gonna make on my youtube channel after the segment so y'all if y'all not already following your boy go ahead and follow on every platform at coach smoot and uh stay up to date with the content stay up to get up to date with the content and there, that's everything outside of college football we always do that content on my on my channel so y'all can enjoy the fun side of the the more fun the even more fun side of what coach smook and the, the the network brings all right um what we got what we got yeah yeah my folks had some fun man nicholas in here my boy nicholas what's up nicholas how you feeling how you feeling today bro agree coach james smith needs to have a good year i think james smith is going to have a good year you gotta remember james smith only a sophomore man james smith and quay russo are just now sophomores bro they're just not sophomores. This is gonna be their first, they first year to even, you know, get loose. It's their first year to get loose, man. Where did Smoot come from? Uh, I'm gonna answer this, then we're gonna get into the segments. So I don't know. I think my dad in here. I think it was either my aunt Charlotte, rest in peace to my aunt Charlotte, uh, and then or my uncle Pezo. They were calling me no. My aunt Charlotte used to call me Smooky, S M O O K I E, and I turned when I was about eight years old. We was uh in Fort, we was stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Um, I started, you know, the name started picking up again because people couldn't say my my government name correctly. So I started going by my nickname, Smooky. But I was like, nah, that Smooky stuff, you know, Lil Bow Wow, Lil Romeo, and them was just, you know, starting to come out and become hot. I was like, bro, if I'm gonna be a child, if I'm gonna be a rapper, I can't be called smooky so i used to call myself a little smooth and then as i got older it just became smooth and then i started coaching uh in 2017 once i got back to fort benning uh no actually 2014 i had my first first coaching assistant job as a, a wide receiver coach at chattahoochee county middle school and then i was coaching every other year and then i got a a, a staff position at uh calvary christian high school and I was there for three seasons, no, two seasons. The third season, I ended up, you know, moving. But uh, yeah, that's when I uh, then I got to Prince George and I started to coach there. But then this opportunity came available, and now I'm here. I've coached semi pro level too, and coached basketball on all levels, high school, middle school. So that's where the coach part comes from. And then on war zone, that's what it was. I used to be coaching people on war zone, like in the game. I always my military mindset. That's what a coach smoke persona was developed you know so yeah that's where the name came from but yeah let's jump into it today so one of my segments i want to talk about who's next we're talking about recruits we're talking about targets guys that have been offered already and could be committing you know some saying they gonna commit in june but i got a text yesterday and my manager was in the vicinity when i got this text and the text came from a young man of uh um big mike y'all know uh michael uh uh dang what's his last name i forget his last name big mike four star 2026 and um he had you know some eyes to get you know some mike carroll big mike carroll right he gave me the eyes i was like what that mean you know coach smooth trying to figure out what you're talking about and uh you know 
he told us if he if he commits to Bama, it's gonna be the come. Is he gonna come onto this show and do it? So uh, we might be seeing Mike a uh, uh, commit here of, of Mike Carroll, class of twenty six. And a lot of people don't get excited about that. You know, verbal commits from the twenty six class. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. You get a commit, that's good. You got another another monumental piece in another class that's ready to make some moves. Um, but looking at this twenty five class, what we looking at now, man. There are some game changers that have been happening. There have been some names been popping back up on the radar that a few weeks ago, I felt like we had no chance. But now I'm starting to hear some, some solid buzz that we are back in the runnings. And a lot of these kids are in-state talents. But let me start on the secondary side. I made my list on this side. Um, let me go to the corners. We had a cornerback. I feel like we got a cornerback that will be committed soon. If not, uh, by the end of this week, sometime in the summer, and that's D. Dijon Lee. I'm hearing great reports out of his camp. Loving the visits. I mean, um, Dijon has taken other visits to other places. You know, Georgia was a, a popular spot for him. But I, I really feel like Dijon Lee is is uh, coming to Bama. Um, who else? Uh, Shamari Earls. Y'all see the, uh, the four-star corner out of uh, Thomas Dale in Chester, Virginia, place I just came from. I was literally... Uh, coaching or starting to coach at Prince George County High School, which is a school in the area right there where Thomas Dale is. Thomas Dale is like the IMG of Virginia. You know, they they have a campus, they have the facilities. They they usually just kind of pick all the top athletes up in that area, in the surrounding areas, and they they go there and they uh, develop those guys at a high rate. Shamari Earls is a is a highly touted four star, bigger kid, one of the bigger DBs you're going to see in this class at six two one eighty. I think uh, after his last visit to Alabama, we actually have him uh, set up to come on the show uh, tonight. Uh, hopefully everything's good up there in Virginia. Um, they had some bad storms. You know, my, my kids are still up that way. So uh, definitely was checking on them. But they had some storms and stuff up in the area. Um, so we, we plan to get him on and get his take on his visit. And also, we also have another um, DB in Grayson, Grayson Littleton. That's a young man that I've been talking to for a few weeks now. His his uh, buzz is picking up. Um, a lot of his offers weren't big power one offers, you know, uh, power power five D1 offers. A lot of them were, were on the lower end, but he's starting to create some buzz for himself, a technician at the cornerback position. And um, I think Alabama is really pushing, uh, pushing, gaining ground in it as far as where his interest is. But he just took a, a, a Penn State visit also, and he said he enjoyed it. Um, like I told him, I said I told him go and enjoy all of his uh, visits. You know, I don't I don't think you go into this uh, in this recruiting process, you know, being picky. I think you go in appreciating every opportunity with, that you get to take a visit, and um, you take advantage of it. You enjoy the experience. You take advantage of it, and you try to learn as much as you can with uh, it, with those that time and that opportunity to create relationships. Uh, I'm about to jump back into y'all comments right after this. I'm going to go to the offensive line. There's some offensive line prospects that you all have been asking about previously that uh, I believe Alabama might be back in the runners. One big in-state name, four-star, 6'5", 315, offensive tackle out of Viger and Mobile, Alabama is Michael Dubose. Yes, Michael Dubose, guys. Um, and I don't do the message boards or anything of that nature. It's just things that I hear from those areas. So. You go down to Viger and there's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of talk about Mike DuBose and some other uh, talent that we don't see on the main front. The big offensive line talent in, in Mobile that really are, you know, wanting to make a name and get to the University of Alabama. Guys are, you know, camping late at Bama to try to gain their attention to get some of these offers. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Mike DuBose starts to, create some momentum for other offensive linemen to, you know, maybe push their commitment dates up. So be looking out for a lot of these guys to come up. Y'all remember I was, I was already high me and my, myself and Ty Hayes. We were saying how um, Oklahoma has a stronghold on the young uh, guy, uh, the young man, Andrew Babaloa, the 6'6", 280, five star. Right. But you see recently there was a story about his visits uh, coming up to Alabama. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a big, it's, it's a lot of things going on with this staff and recruiting and this class in particular that's going to affect the 26th class. But this class 
we might be we might be seeing some crazy flips we might be seeing some crazy commitments let me jump in your comments y'all i've been rambling for a good minute you just subscribed to my youtube turn up thank you antoine prayers up for you what, what happened with antoine what happened to my brother didn't want to do today though two year date my oh man listen listen y'all moment of silence y'all for real uh you know for anybody lost anybody you know because i ain't gonna lie i had them days too antoine so prayers up for you my boy glad we able to be a relief here at bama football on youtube to kind of keep your mind off it but moment of silence for all the lost ones man everybody lost somebody or anything like that moment of silence for y'all And I pray everybody's strength in today as they go about their days. If that caused you to think of somebody that you know you may have lost, think of it in a good light. You're still here to celebrate them. So celebrate them with positive thoughts. Just know we have been football on YouTube. The family here, we care about everybody here. Um, every it's not about it's not just all about football, but we are a community that supports each other. And uh Antoine is a consistent supporter of this channel. So uh appreciate you that you feel comfortable sharing that and know that you're always in our prayers, bro always all of you all always in my prayers appreciate y'all but listen back to it and i i just don't want to dampen the mood y'all i just i seen it and i didn't want him to feel like i didn't acknowledge it you know that's a personal friend of mine now you know got to meet him in person so definitely thinking about you brother uh aloha coach smook what up jenny jenny if you in uh hawaii telling me aloha i'm jealous i'm gonna just let you know right now i'm jealous all right but Who's next? Y'all heard some of the comments. Let me see. Uh, Mike Dubose. <laughs> that name does make you cringe a little bit. It does make you. It's Micah, though. Micah. M-I-C-A-H. Dubose. We ain't, ain't got to worry about no Mike Dubose coming back. <laughs> like, for real, man. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all y'all see y'all getting all sentimental in the chat. Listen, so that's that's my scoop on who's next. Um, It's a few receivers, too. Y'all heard we got Caleb Cunningham. We back in the mix for Caleb Cunningham. Some like a lot of a lot of these names that's getting back to the to the uh, campus to visit. Uh, They're making me look like a fool, man. They're making me look like a fool from my take from maybe three weeks ago because they really had shut us out. They really had shut us out. National media was was echoing the same. And um, I feel like this coaching staff is doing a good good job of getting guys on campus for a visit. Hey, come have a conversation, man. Bring your family. Bring your mom. Bring your dad. You know, bring your little brother that's looking up to you. Yeah, bring them with you. Who? And I'm telling you, I guarantee you, Coach Shepard is asking these kids, hey, man, what's your why? You got somebody that you're playing for? Bring them on this visit with you to Alabama. Watch what happens when you get to Tuscaloosa. Let me sit down and look at you in the face. Look at you in your eyes, right? Hold on, guys. Mom, meatloaf. Now. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm sorry, y'all. I had, I had to do it. I, had to do it. I felt Darius in the chat, so I had to give my boy a shout out, man. Trent, he said, I'm scared a running back might leave. You know, other teams are looking at like Miller and Young and are, are, are like that their second and third string they gonna offer them uh trent don't be scared don't be scared have no fear that I, that's not how it works for most of these guys on this roster uh, i promise you if they stayed after saving if they competed through the spring very few are leaving and we have three running backs that are going to get carries this year richard young jam miller justice haynes daniel hill will get opportunities too but he won't have nothing to improve this year. Kevin Riley won't have nothing to improve this year. But we will have three running back rotation. Promise you. Two early identity predictions, y'all. Y'all crazy. I knew y'all was going <laughs> to. Uh, too early. Too early identity check, right? Listen. <laughs> Moon Rock, I'm going to hit you up when I get off the stream, bro. Uh, too early identity check. This is what I want to talk about. Let's check our identity. And we might not get through all of these uh, segments today because I really want to use our time wisely today. We got a lot to do business wise. Uh, so I really want to use this time to let's identity check right now. 
We got to see the bowl game, right? I mean, not the bowl game, the spring game. I said the bowl game. Lord, have mercy. What is going on with me? We got to see the spring game. Y'all remember, I'm going to pull this video clip because I remember when we was playing this and there was a a, a big debate on uh, a certain quarterbacks play and his throwing motion and all of this stuff. Um, but and I told you all, it was some things that I was seeing in warmups. It was some things that I was seeing in 11 on 11 from this Alabama spring football team that led me to believe that our identity would be exactly what was sort of this offensively. Our identity would be kind of was uh, what was displayed during the spring game. And uh, and so <laughs> and so you look at how the game played out. A lot of our early big plays happen. Uh, because of the run game we we ran the ball very well in the spring game and some of it was due to you know how the defensive play calling was and then uh also but some of it was due to just great execution by the offensive line you saw a good balance of defensive push at some points but overall i was satisfied with the run game and a lot of people have this misconception that kaylin the in this offense will be a, a air raid offense but what Kalen DeBoer was able to do at uh, Fresno his first year in transitioning that team into his scheme. They were able to establish the run game and they were successful at the run run game uh, a high rate. At Fresno State his first year, their run game averaged 6.3 yards per carry in that in, in, in conference play. And that was the COVID year. Then the second year, it hung around about 5.3. But the passing yardage increased that full season. And then you saw he did the similar numbers at Washington. Um, even last year, I think they averaged like 6.4, 6.5 yards per carry as a total for team stats, right? Um, you look at what the offense did in the spring game and the amount of running backs we have available with the caliber of offensive line that we can develop, not what we currently have, because I think we still need to sure up that left tackle position. I, I think we're in the right, headed in the right direction with, uh, you know, bringing Caden Proctor back. And um, that's always a good thing, but look at how the play calling was for the spring game and i got reason to believe that the offensive identity is going to be built off of the run game for this season we're going to see a a, a solid pass game uh, uh an efficient pass game um but i think when you have the skill sets you have in this running back room you don't uh you don't shy away from that if it's working and kaylin DeBoer is not a uh ego coach he's not an ego coach he's a he's a winning coach right He's a, he's a coach that knows how to win. He's won every stop he's been at, right? So you look at it and you you look at the way that the quarterback room is developing, what Jalen Miro was able to do in the spring game, what Ty Simpson was able to do in the spring game because of the success of the run game. And I am about 100% confident that this team, offensive identity, will be built, built off the run game. You have an offensive line coach in Coach Cap who has a run scheme design, run game design coordinator. In his history, that's uh, an expertise of his with the offensive line and setting up protections, run block schemes. I mean, you see, it looks as if he's having fun with this athletic front that he has to work with. Um, and this offensive line group, it, it it goes deep, man. A lot of undeveloped talent, you know, and you're seeing this the, the technique changes in this offensive line. I was very uh, pleased with James Brockermeyer, by the way, with uh, his execution. One, maybe two sort of low snaps nothing horrible um but uh for him to come into this role this year it's great to see him blossom um but yeah uh but but i'm telling you this first year coming under kaylin the i believe that we will see a um a a not a run heavy if i had to percentage it up i would say a uh 55 45 uh pass run ratio so 55 percent passing 45 percent run but a lot of that run game will be early on to establish a momentum early to open up pass game because you know teams are going to want to play too high they're going to want to play you know a lot, a lot of match zone coverage on the back end how do you get them out of that have a successful run game simple doesn't matter what type of run game as long as you have a successful type of run game and you see how he likes to pull the guards the the, the strong side center I mean, the strong side tackles, strong side guard, that pin and pull type type offset action, the counter run action on just about every pass play is going to make you respect the run game. 
And the only way you respect the counter action on play action is if you have a success in the run game. A lot of this offensive success, the offensive success is based off of pre-snap motion and, and being able to go off of play action into your deep ball. So I, I, I believe, I believe Coach Smook believes that this will be a team that depends heavily on the run to get everything established and get going, especially in big games against stout fronts, especially in big games. You will see Kalen DeBoer try to stretch. And I mean, extension of the run game, jet sweep, quick screen, you know, jet, not jet, but uh, zero and, 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 and X-ray screens. Like there'll be so many quick screens that you'll see a lot of one-on-ones and all it is extension of the run game. So, um, but that doesn't say that the pass game won't be the, the explosive part of it. That doesn't mean that, you know, we won't see Jalen Miro 30, you know, average 30 passes a game. There will be, you know, 25 to 30 passes a game for Jalen Miro is ideal. You factor in maybe five or six scrambles. You hand the ball off 25 to 30 times. You got, you, you're right around that snap count you want to be as far as a successful offense. Now, one thing we also must highlight with the identity is that Coach DeBoer said, each scrimmage was around 85 to 90 plays. That's conditioning their minds to say, hey, if we can get to this target number of plays being caught, that means our offense is controlling the tempo at the rate we want and the defense is giving us opportunities and we're making the most of them. So you think about it. Now, if you get him up towards that 80 snap target, that means you're able to hand the ball off at least 30 times, 35 times. Why you got your quarterback dropping 20 and 25 times with, you know, straight dropbacks and then you know another five or ten of those snaps can be designed rollouts get off platform move the pocket for the quarterback if we're having problems with protection like you get a good balance of play calling when you have when you're able to lean on the run game so Kalen DeBoer is smarter than me when it comes to calling the offenses and, and creating schemes and game plans to win games so if I can see that I think he's already seen it too I think he's already seen it too now <clears throat> Um, and I see your comments. I see a lot of good comments. I'm, I'm really trying to do this for a cut. So, uh, yeah, 411 carries, 574 passes, roughly about 4550. I mean, a 4555 split, right? 45 run, 55 pass, just like I called out a minute ago, roughly. And I mean, maybe a little bit less percentage wise. Y'all, y'all the smart ones. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just a, a speculative analyst. You know, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm, I'm low key, but. If I looked at those numbers off the bat, to me, that's that's roughly that split. You sitting at a roughly right at a thousand total snaps. Um, 400 of them is right at 60. I mean, 40 percent. You got the other 60 going towards, you know, that that passing 55, 45. I, 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 I go with it. I rock with it. Um, we certainly have the running back depth to force teams to commit to stop the run. I'm hoping that we don't have the drops because I think Bernard would draw additional coverage. You know what, defend? Have no fear because we didn't even turn. We didn't get out of the first paragraph of what this offensive scheme is going to do. We didn't get out the first paragraph. Some people say we didn't turn the page. We didn't get out the first paragraph. A lot of different formations, but man, go back and watch the scrimmage. I love, listen, I'm going to start, Coach Smooth going to start giving y'all film study homework. Well, I'm going to start seeing y'all home with film homework. Go back and watch the scrimmage again. Look how many formations we ran. Look how many run design plays we ran. And look how many pass design plays we ran. I think it was a max of six plays out of eight or nine formations, I want to say. And then same thing with the runs. It was like five different run plays. Same same scheme, same 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 zone scheme. And that's why the defense started having success. They started seeing, you know, they started becoming feel, familiar with it. it that, that's a good thing for both sides. Learning how to stay disciplined. Can you continue to maintain success while remaining, you know, a uh, uh, scheme discipline, right? But also, can you, um, as a defense, can you make adjustments, in-game adjustments to start keying on things and seeing things as they and anticipate them as they happen or as they develop? That's that's a huge thing to do. So, from a men men mental standpoint, I, I think I think we're sitting good. I think we're sitting good. Now, identity-wise, on the defense. Smook, I was thinking maybe 60, 40, 45, 55. You know what, Stephen Angle? You, it's 60, 40 because you're you're lopsided, okay? You're lopsided. I'm just playing. I might be lopsided. But, yeah, we we in the same ballpark, though. We in the same ballpark. And don't forget, that's Kalen DeBoer's second year. Go to the first-year stats if you don't mind undefeated. Go check the first-year stats. I, 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 I'm pretty sure 
that first year of Washington, the run game was leaned on a little bit more than the pass game. Yeah, and it, it just happens naturally. Um, Antoine, he said, 499, having a more confident backup QB this year, would would you be more aggressive running Jay Mill more this year if you were OC? 100%, Antoine, 100%. And you will see Kalen DeBoer do that with Jalen Miro. That's one thing that he highlighted in the presser. Jalen Miro's ability to use his legs will be on display. We will display that ability. There's no need to hide it. The young man plays better when his legs get going. His best passing game was against Ole Miss when he had to use his legs to create that time. Like, it made him comfortable in the pocket. It gets the deep, the D-line against the linebackers. They don't press gaps. They don't shoot gaps as hard. When your, your your quarterback is killing him with his legs, and now he's got a quarterback coach that's going to say, "Hey man, you're you're staring too long." He only going to get one or two of those in the game before he gets replaced, and I think he knows that. I think he knows that. He got to use them legs. Don't give the defense an, uh, an advantage. Antoine, appreciate that four ninety nine super chat, my guy. Scary offense facts, Nicholas. I sent two comments. Oh, nah, you good, bro. You know I'll be picking. You know I'll be picking Steven. We didn't get to see Justice, but we already know what he's already going to do. Hey, Nicholas, I'm not worried about the Justice. Defensively, let's jump to the defense before we close out today. Uh, defensively, as you look at some of the defensive warm-ups from um, the last week of spring practice, uh, a lot of people were concerned about the defense's early performance. Me, not so much. I knew coming into this game, this would be a, a, a read and react show. This would be a read and react show in this defense. No matter what the play call is, you have to make adjustments on the fly because of the space that's provided when you send the exotic blitzes, when you send the stunts up front, the space that's provided. So the only way that you can prepare for that is by getting guys used to reading and reacting. Yes, you got soft eagle cover three match one match. Why, you know, on on one ready. You get what I'm saying? Or, or base. Soft Eagle three match wide Z Z Z Z option on one ready, you know cloud cloud three Z go uh, uh crowd crowd cloud three cloud two whatever Eagle X X X ray X ray X ray X hot X hot you know like all of these different adjustments will be made the linebacker will be calling stunts up front Gator Gator 45 45 41 41 14 14 like. All these things will be made, but you know what's the best defense? When guys can drop back to a spot, watch a play develop, look at the quarterback's eyes, and see what the what the you know identify. Okay, I got two climbers, two climbers. Somebody's got to break in or out. Somebody's got to keep climbing, or somebody's got to stop. Do I have the okay? I got over top. Boom! You already there. Balls in the air. You already headed there because you're reacting. You're reading and reacting. That's what this scrimmage was used for, and you saw how difficult it was to do that early in the game. You saw how difficult it was, but you saw the adjustments made in the second half. You can't tell me that you didn't see DBs crashing on plays, on uh, attacking the ball in the air on pass plays. You can't tell me that you didn't see DBs crowding the line of scrimmage a lot more when they saw certain sets, when they saw certain motions, when they saw certain releases, right? You can't tell me that the linebackers didn't start filling gaps a lot better in that second half. So it's all about getting used to a whole new system. These players are, on the defensive side are going to be accounted they're going to be held accountable to be able to play free they're going to be have to be able to trust each other and the only way you do that is everybody is used to reacting you might have an idea that you got a blitz but if you see the screen developing in the middle of your your blitz it, it, what's what's the better play to make take away the blitz so that the offensive linemen that are leaving the block for the screen they they don't they're not there to protect you get what i'm saying you go disrupt the play go disrupt the, the screen pass let your D lineman that's already pressing the quarterback, let them chase him out and make him extend a play and make a play. But if you're the blitz and you see that running back, you key in that 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 handoff area, and you see that action, you see the guard pull up and let you through, you gotta have the, the reaction ability to do that, to react to it. So I'm I'm just I'm just saying, to me, it 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 was a mixture of just getting settled and also the tackling. Man, we're not trying to hurt nobody. It's the spring game. How many times have we come out of spring game with guys literally the season in the injuries in spring games? I was glad to see there were no freak injuries, no, 
You get what I'm saying? No, no torn ACLs because of a bad plant. Like everything went to. I, I guarantee you, this staff is excited about how this uh this this uh scrimmage went. Defense says I'm excited to see how coach utilizes these dogs on the defense as scrimmage went and on. I did see a twist or two that created pressures and tackles. Yeah, I mean we saw a very light dose of it, but if you pay attention. Look at the D-line. There was a lot in the D-line. It was a lot of D-line. O-line did a good job passing off protections. James Brockemeyer, Tyler Booker, Jaden Roberts early on. Um, they, they, I mean, passed off pressures like it was none other. You know, communication is there. Communication is there. Brayson Hubbard has to play this year. Him on red and red look great. I think Brayson Hubbard is perfect for teams that's going to be run heavy. I think he's perfect because he has the range to get over top and recover, you know, on, on the help, on the help over top. But he but he also has some, I mean, just some power when he comes in runs fit. I mean, comes up with 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 an aggression, with a tenacity to just tear it all up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Jay. That's what I'm saying. Steven Angle, it, it, it wasn't, nobody had an answer for Michigan's defensive front. Nobody did. So it ain't just Coach KD. And Coach KD, I believe Coach KD with a different, with a different group of, a uh, different front has a lot more success. That, go watch the middle of that, that, that Washington and Michigan game. They found something. He had found something. They just, attrition set in. That D-line, Michigan had the deepest rotation at D-line in the country this year. <laughs> oh yeah 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 but it really wasn't a hard hit he just called him on a, on a solid angle k spray he caught it at a solid angle it's kind of like a leverage type deal it looked worse than what it was i promise you it, it looked worse what it, it looked worse than what it was oh yeah me too defense hey y'all but listen appreciate y'all for hanging out today y'all um, i did i went to the portal again I got some business to handle today, y'all. We got some meetings to handle. Um, it's been fun, as always, y'all. It's always fun to come and kick it with y'all. Y'all know my segments. They've been a little bit more direct the last two days. We just got a lot of business to handle to continue to grow the network, right? To continue to grow. Um, Bama Football on YouTube, Coach Smooth, uh, Coach Sean, Ty, um, Jance, everybody. We got, we got a lot of things going on, um, and we're trying to set the summer up to be a content-filled summer for you all and as the supporters of this channel so as you all get ready to go out on and enjoy the rest of your days this the the uh the schedule for tonight the schedule for tonight coach jay will uh pop it off at 6 p.m then uh coach sean will be 7 central standard time and then i'll be 8 central standard time um i'm gonna have to double check about my segment i gotta double check but i plan on being on at 8 central standard time and uh tonight i plan to do um, just a 30 minute round table with the fellas. If we don't have Shamari Earl on tonight, do a 30 minute round table with the fellas. Um, with Coach Jay, Coach Sean, have them on for an extra 30 minutes and we discuss today's hot topics. And uh we'll get into it like that. Undefeated. We'll we'll continue to grow. Appreciate y'all. Let me see how many likes we had on the stream. And we'll do some reality versus reach with the coaches tonight. We'll do some reality versus reach. Um, and we'll base it off of my identity topic. We'll present them with our identity topic, right? We'll uh, we'll present them with that, and we'll see how how it goes. Hey, make sure y'all run the likes up for for the channel, man. We had 177 likes. Um, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for the 150 plus likes. Um, I seen comments. Let me see what y'all was talking about. Love the chat. Very interactive. Very informative daily. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Later, Smoop. All right, Will. I didn't even see you in here, man. Auntie, what that mean? TCOB. <laughs> why I always get why I always get lost, y'all? Why I always get lost? Let me see. Can you catch my question real quick? What question? What question? Oh, take care of business. Oh, auntie, you got auntie, you gotta start saying standing on business. I feel like if we if you 
if you start saying standing on business it's gonna change the game hey see you later john much love cynthia much love everybody everybody steven said can i answer this question what question man you asked like smooth which of your channels are you going to be live on after the live i was just responding to redfish and adam oh my fault uh uh uh, uh my coach smooth channel at coach smooth right there on youtube on youtube what's my snapchat at coach smooth on snapchat i'm at coach smooth on everything man if you see a if you see one with some uh some naked uh pale booty cheeks that's not me i don't know who that is that's not me that's not me no really it's not i promise you guys it's not me i swear it's not me i know ne i never did those type of i never had an only fans none of that never that's not me nothing none of me take care of business cynthia get out of here <laughs> take care y'all but i appreciate y'all uh catch up with y'all later follow me echo smooth shouts out to our sponsors uh residence in ocean city maryland rogue shop demetrius maynard of the maynard group appreciate y'all um shout out to the cbd you know what i'm saying appreciate y'all moon rock everybody in the chat cynthia auntie janet steven angle nicholas uh kt k spray uh caleb william chun uh uh <laughs> defense i'm laughing i got some stuff going on in the background y'all i hear somebody acting up on the other side uh but yeah i bet y'all wondering who too but now nah, don't worry about it mind your business but yeah y'all be easy man it's your boy coach smooth i'll catch y'all on the next one i'm gonna leave y'all with a big old big old let me get the music ready let me get the music ready Roll Tide Roll, y'all be easy, man. I love it.